Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Y'all, I won the thing, or a part of the thing. The fuck? What the fuck, y'all? I won best com composition and was apparently, from what they said last night, a potential candidate for overall best piece. Nix, good morning. Hi, I love you. Um, we're celebrating a little bit this morning. Um, my little stompy boy won, like one of the top prizes. There are, five, there are six categories you can win and you can't repeat any of the five that are not community vote. So um, there's overall best and overall best amateur, which I put in for amateur and they said I didn't qualify as an amateur piece. My painting was too good to qualify as amateur. Um, so they moved me out of amateur into the overall and I was considered for overall best um, I was also considered for best basing, but after best basing, um, the next highest prize you can get is best composition, which takes into the, the composition of the piece overall. Um, and they said that I far better fit that. And it, cause if there was a better composition, I probably would have won best basing. So I was in the running for multiples. I won best composition. So I get a really cool limited edition I think it's signed John Blanche art piece, who is one of the most iconic artists for um, uh, for Games Workshop for 40K. Um, so I get to pick between two pieces. I'm probably going to take the sisters piece because sisters are going to be my main army eventually. Um, and based on the reactions in chat last night, especially because mine was so late in the listings. I think I actually have a really good shot at Community Favorite. Like, incredibly good shot at Community Favorite. Um, hi, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, welcome in, Raiders. If I could get a shout-out for Nyx, I'd appreciate it. Nyx, let me know what y'all were up to on stream this morning. 
Um, I'm just kind of getting into my office. I went back upstairs. I got up early because I needed to do Princess's hair before she left for school, and then I went back to bed after I got some editing done for Fairwick stuff. So, so I won, y'all. I won one of the really big awards. I did, like I said, I thought I might have a shot at basing and I might have a shot at community favorite if they go public with the with the thing. And they're only going to do it in Discord. And even now they're only going to do it in his Discord now, I think. I really think I have a shot based on the reactions in chat last night because chat blew the fuck up when my piece came on. And when I tell you how good that fucking felt after the 100 or 150 hours that I've spent over the last three weeks painting this thing with a disability behind the eight ball because I got started late. Like, I have hand tremors, I have a brain injury. The left side of my body sometimes just does not cooperate. Um, I have incredibly bad eyesight from my head injury. Um, and I, I actually placed really high. And that gives me, took off right away for food, that's valid. Um, I need to DM Nix and Sam and see when they want to grab Zero and Catherine and come up for a cookout and then let's see if I can get Cedar down here too. Um, see if Tanya wants to come out. I want to do a cookout at the house. Um, I have company coming at the end of this month that I'm very excited about for those of you who have not heard. Uh, both Ryan and Jace from Between Two Gays are moving across the country and they are stopping in Chicago for a couple of days to stay with me and I'm very excited about it. Um, I gotta get a hold of folks here and see what people's schedules are now that they have kind of finalized dates, which I just found out last night. Um, so I'm super excited. I may have to cancel a stream while they're here because if they're here, I'm not streaming. Um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, uh, we wrapped Revelry this weekend. Oh shit. We did not expect this week to be the finale, but here we are. I'm getting my wet palette dampened. So bear with me y'all. It's going to take it a second because this thing is all shriveled up. <laughs> um, so they're coming to visit. Um, just a lot going on. I'm y'all. I am so beside myself. I didn't expect to win anything. I didn't expect to win anything. I did it because I wanted the feedback. The feedback was don't hold back so much with your highlights. Just go for it. They want to see me push the darks darker, um, than I did. They think I should have started with an even darker blue and worked up from there. Um, so I know that going forward because that will be taken into consideration because some of these people are professional judges, but there were four judges and the harshest critique I got was push your contrast farther. They literally sat there and like picked apart a couple of minis that were in the winning categories and they're like, push your contrast harder. So I'm gonna turn this around so we can take one last peek at them before I get started painting my next competition piece. I'm gonna work on Scotty today as well as a mini for myself. Um, so here is our stompy boy. Here is our baby. I might actually bring him with me to PAX. I might consider him as a PAX piece as well as Glicks. But they, they love the metal bluing. Um, the one I got a one piece of critique from chat from somebody who I don't know very well, but was very, very chatty last night. And that's that I could have gone in here and done some more uh, weathering because there's all of this bluing. Um, but I don't know that they understood that the concept wasn't that the bluing was from batter so much as bluing was their color scheme. Zero, I won. I won one of the, thank you, Ms. Face. I won one of the big, uh, one of the big prizes. I didn't win overall, but based on critique last night, I was in the running for overall mine fit best composition. So I won best composition last night. So I have a limited edition John Blanche art piece coming. Like I'm getting a, a copy of his limited edition sisters pieces with, uh, with certificate of authenticity and everything that it's real. Um, and I am, yes. <laughs> and I am in the, I think I am in hardcore running for community favorite. Cause last night when they put this piece up, chat blew up and it was the loudest chat was all night. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Yep. 
yeah, he thought that this should be distressed as well because these would be heated, but I don't think that he understood that the concept was that this is their colors, not literal damage. Thank you, Zero. I am I am beside myself. So at the very start of everything, he said we got like 14 entries, right? So I got out a piece of paper because I, I can math when I have to. And I knew if they got through seven, I had a 50-50 chance, or got through like five or six of them, I had a 50-50 chance of winning. Because there's five prizes. So if there were, there's 14. If they got through four, I had a 50-50 chance of winning. And at, that chance just kept going up and up and up and up and up because there's five prizes listed last night. Um, so I just started ticking just to pay attention. Trick, thank you so much for your resub. Miss Face, thank you for, for your resub. Trick, that's two years, that's awesome. Sorry, I know I'm like rambling. I am still like a little freaked out because I told y'all I saw some of these pieces and I expected to go in and win nothing but good feedback. They couldn't even give negative feedback. It was just straight up. Phoenix, thank you for the base. Oh God, y'all done kicked off a hype train. I can't remember last time we had a hype train on this channel. Holy shit. Thank you. Um, and they couldn't give negative feedback. They're all like, and he was sitting there last night and Thunderhead was like, you know, um, the more we looked at the piece, the more we liked it. Cause it's just little stuff that you did. You know, it was the hard shadow that per perfectly fits the light angle. It's the, you know, they loved this part. Cause there's a, I have a, a one of my close up shots that I did for Insta is a close up of all of this. They were hog wild for how this bluing came out. And up close, it looks like shit, but from a distance, which is where it matters. <laughs> um, But yeah, they really loved it. Um, Photography wise, I needed to take this, whoop, I dropped his flowers. I needed to get the back from like this angle as a three quarter shot as opposed to this angle because it kind of ate the, the red here. Um, they did say that I needed to push this color more and they're absolutely right. I really pushed this red in here hard and it just didn't want to take. Um, so this, this little part here looks unfinished and that was completely valid. But even that, thank you so much for the timer reset. Cerulean, thank you. Tim, thank you for your resub. Another two year, wow. Um, but yeah, like I could go in here and push this red harder and I might, if this go, if I decide to take this to PAX, I'm gonna look over the Acadian brush categories and if there's a category I can put them in, cause I still wanna take Glicks too. Um, if there's a category that I can put this guy in, um, I am gonna push this red a little further. I am gonna go back in there and do exactly that because they're right, this should be more red in here. And there's plenty of red paint here, but with Turbo Dorks, you have to thin them so much to get that airbrush quality with brushing on. You have to thin them a lot and you need to do like five coats. Um, so I just didn't push this corner as hard as I should have. And there's a lot of like stuff that pooled, especially when I went in and did the ink. Um, DC, thank you so much for your resub as well. I appreciate it, 16 heckin' months. Um, but yeah, they were really, really pleased with the piece overall. They think I did a really good job. Um, they want to see me back for more of their competitions. They want, uh, hey, Frank. Um, they want to see me push things just a little harder. And I mean, what do I got to lose at this point? I know people like my work enough that I want a thing. So take a little bit more chances on the next one. Maybe push real hard with Mecha May. But they loved how this gold came out on the front. I So y'all, I know that y'all saw me do it and I, I wavered really hard as to rather or not to redo the studs on the front. I was tempted to just leave them. I was worried if I blacked out all the studs and then put the bronze over it, it was gonna throw off the continuity, but my gut said do it and I did it. And they actually picked that out as part of, of the critique of something that I did really well, which was you can tell up close, especially all of those individual studs pull out really well. And it's because they're not painted all the way to the base. I blacked out all of the studs and then went back over them with the bronze, the gold and a little dot of white to make them get that more 3D effect. They love the wiring in here because there were a few pieces that people didn't paint that wiring. Um, in the controversial mode of the night, 
Um, the guy that I was talking about that didn't pay one quarter of the mini got disqualified. But he didn't get disqualified for that. He got disqualified because he was supposed to turn in three photos. He turned in three video stills. He did a quick video of the mini all the way around and then picked out the best three pictures and sent those in as video stills. And they're like, we're, we are disqualifying you. He got called out. Well, because he's well known in the industry, he is a very, very popular photographer for small products, including miniatures. He has all the equipment on earth and he got lazy about it because he has his work to do. So he just filmed it, so they disqualified him. And then he comes in chat and he goes, I'm calling the cops on all of you. And everybody was like, <laughs> he literally got told off on stream, it was fucking hilarious. Now Matt's a really nice guy. He's not a bad dude. He is involved in tons of painting competitions. He's very, very busy. He was doing this for fun, right? And still put out an incredible piece in like a day and a half with oil paints and everything else. He just got called on it. <laughs> he also has one of the most adorable dachshunds in the world and Thunderhead has a sticker. It's all of his emotes or his dachshund and Thunderhead's got a sticker on his 3D printers. Um, and uh, we love to troll him while he were waiting. For, so every Sunday night he does the storm report um, where he shows off a bunch of community artwork and he's running his 3D printers on screen. And every time it comes up, somebody's like, dude, you got a wiener on your 3D printer that breaks TOS. It's always somebody different. We troll him all the time about it. It's very funny. Um, you know, if you enjoy that kind of humor, but I'm really proud of what I did here. I did, um, I think the thing for me, cause like I said, a win for me, oh, Phoenix, thank you. I'll reset the timer and everything. Thank you for biddies. Um, I think the thing that got me, and I said this going into where my, what my standards are gonna be. Tim, thank you so much. Would a thank you. Well, I'm being very kind, thank you. Um, this is my full-time job, so this is all the money I get during the month is what y'all give me, so thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a lot right now. I'm, I'm a ball of emotions. Um, for those of you who didn't see, we did wrap on revelry this weekend. We were able to get Ulfir back all of his things as well. Um, Glick's got the happy ending she deserved. And I cried a lot yesterday. I cried Yesterday I cried so much I should be beyond dehydrated right now because I cried all fucking day about all different shit. Um, Ophir can come to the carnival and actually see what Glicks looks like. Maybe Ophir comes back when we do the one shot for one of the weddings. Phoenix, thank you for the resub. I appreciate it. Um... But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the piece overall. I think I'm gonna do a little more like tweaking and work to it and go ahead and push it a little further, see what I can do with it ahead of, uh, ahead of PAX. And in the meantime, just be really proud of it. But I had said with Golden Demon, I know I'm not winning a Golden Demon. I want that out there now. It's nothing to do with lack of confidence. I know the quality of my paint jobs versus Golden Demon. I have a shot at a couple in Resin Beast. I might have one category in Golden Demon that I might be able to pull off. But, but, my goal isn't to win. My goal is to get good feedback to go into 2025 and win. Um, something. My goal is a win for me is someone I don't know flipping out over one of my pieces and posting it everywhere and talking about how great it is. That is mine. Oh, Frank, thank you. It's Molecule, enjoy your sub. So my goal is to go in and have someone that I don't know just absolutely love my work. That's a win for me. And that happened last night. That happened when this got posted and everyone in chat started freaking out over the piece and how much they loved it. The flowers sold it like I knew it would. Because sometimes you have to be a little calculated in the decisions you make when you make a mini. Everyone loved the flowers. They thought the flowers were hilarious. Which is what they were meant to be. So... 
So, but my, my, my measure of success was going into Golden Demon and Resin Beast and everything else is somebody I don't know freaking out over my work and thinking it's really cool. And when I tell y'all that chat exploded last night, go watch the VOD on Thunderhead Studios. If somebody wants to grab the link, go get it. If you have a VIP badge or higher, you can post links. So much so that do you, you know how with, um, when they go back and they put up a card, they put up like your still or the still of the, st the stream, right? Like if you go to someone's stream and they've got the still up of a spot during stream, they always take it from when chat was the most active. My mini is what you see when you pop over there. If that's not an ego boost, I don't know what is. Yes, it is very close to the time reset. Y'all are being very kind today. Thank you. I love how this reads that I, I'm glad I did a little green dot. It's hard to see it. Like if I pull it up here, you can kind of see it. But right in the middle right here, there was a little tiny piece of support that I didn't catch that was sticking up a little bit. I just turned it into a light because it was right in the center. Phoenix, thank you so much for the biddies. I appreciate it. Um... But yeah, I'm going to take this with me. I'm going to take this with me to PAX. I don't think I have anything I can enter it in at Adepticon. Um, but I'm going to take it with me. Um, I'm going to put, I may push the color a little bit more. We're going to see. I'm definitely going to go in and rework this piece. Thank you all so much for the hype train. I appreciate it. Y'all are very kind. Thank you. Um... But yeah, I'm I'm really, really happy with it. I'm real happy with how I did. Um, I feel really good about the colors. I feel really good about the color scheme. I feel really good about like the new skills that I've learned with this. Um, you know, after that first base got destroyed, to come back and it be not only considered for best basing, but only being passed over for best basing to put it in a higher category of winning because the overall composition was so good. Like, and I've, I've been proud of the concept. So this is the thing. And I talk about it all the time. I have aphantasia. I can't visualize anything. I have to put it down and manipulate stuff and get it until it was where I feel comfortable with it. I can't just picture it. I can articulate a concept, but I can't picture a concept. Um, so, you know, to say this is kind of what I want to do now, how do I do it without being able to see it is a big deal. Um, and I think I pulled that off really well. Um, I did not realize that they were going to pull Walter in um, or Evan Walter's workshop in at the last minute as a judge because he had been asked and then Thunderhead had forgotten to get back to him because Thunderhead's had a lot going on. Um, and Evan had said, you know, so I had been showing the piece off in Evan's stream a bunch because he wasn't a judge. <laughs> So he'd seen the thing like a hundred fucking times through all of the stages. Um, and then he ended up being one of the judges. <laughs> but to hear that everybody, all four of the judges who are all really accomplished, incredible painters just kind of loved it and were like, yeah, this is super cool and deserves to win something. Where do we put it? And then it was minimal, minimal critique on what was wrong with the piece. It was all about how overall good it was, and they just wish I would have pushed it a little harder and let loose a little bit more. Seeger, I swear to God, I'm gonna eat your foot off. I'm gonna bite it right off your. F hey! Stop! I'm gonna kick you out of my office. What am I gonna do? No! I don't wanna hear you slopping on your foot. No, go to sleep. You can go to the vet tomorrow and feel better. He did something to his foot and we don't know what, and he's licking the shit out of his foot. There's nothing there. We can't find a scratch, a splinter. We, he has one nail that's a little chipped low, but it, does, it shouldn't be hurting him as much as he's licking it. And he's just licking the hell out of his foot and we can't figure out why. Stop it. Stop. Go to sleep. You're going to hurt it more. Go to bed. There's no heat on it. There's no infection. I clipped his nails a little shorter and he's still just... It's gross. It's so gross. Oy. Anyway, let me paint a mini. What do we say? Uh, I'm going to be working on Scotty today. Obviously, another competition piece due the end of this month. I can zoom this back in a little bit now. Oop, wrong way. 
So we're gonna work on Scotty today. We're gonna bring up some more of this red on her skin. Um, and then we're also gonna work on, this is my mini for my D&D campaign. She's a super cool little sculpt I found on my mini factory and uh, B printed her for me. So we're gonna work on her today too. Hey geese, welcome in. All right, let me grab this little dog hair off of my wet palette and then grab a wet palette sheet. Baby, stop, please. I love you. I don't want you to get hurt. You're a good boy. Go to sleep. You're not licking your feet when you're sleeping. Go to sleep or daddy's going to have to give you a trazodone because we're going to have to give you one later anyway. You got to go to the vet tomorrow. Making your first D&D character? Awesome. Do you know what you want to play? I'm nosy. Making characters is my favorite thing to do. itself without me even looking okay we are gonna start with scotty a la sunburn and we are gonna start today with her freckles we're gonna work on all of her freckles and then i'm gonna go in with a very thin right it's magic it's the magic of uh, a wet palette paper it's so fun i always love to watch it roll up and then unroll and sometimes it does it when i'm not even looking um all right, I'm gonna grab this tiger's eye skin. This is gonna be her freckle, one of her two freckle colors. Seeger, enough. Hey, knock it off. I'm gonna put you out of my office. I don't want people on stream listening to you slurp your foot. Go to sleep. Daddy's home, I will put you out. B's home today, so. He's home today and he's home tomorrow. medium sitting on top there. I may actually have to get the nip knob napped out to shake this. We'll see. Let's see if that is any better. Not much. All right get my headset and get a tiny brush and we're just gonna go to town and we are just gonna work on painting about a million freckles on our favorite little ginger. Yeah, there's lots of options. Uh, if it's your first, I'm gonna highly recommend against going with a bard uh, or and artificer, because both are very complicated classes. Most spell ca caster, most spell casters, are really difficult to play as your first character. Just in my opinion, because there's a lot of math and there's a lot of keeping track of stuff. Except for clerics, clerics tend to be okay for a first. That's just my opinion, though. Obviously, play what you want. But if that helps you narrow it down at all. Oh, if you've played in some one shot, then there you go. That's a little different then. I am currently playing an arcane archer, which is this this character right here. I, I went fighter specifically because I'm playing in a group of new players, 
that all pick difficult classes. So I'm there so that I could I can help. My oldest kid is playing and she's the only other experienced person at the table. The DM has played a bit. It's his first time DMing. So I'm like, I'm gonna play something really simple that just hits really hard so I could be here to answer questions. That's my current game that that mini is for, which we play this week and then we're supposed to be playing on the fifth, but I may not be available that night because Ryan and Jace may be here, so. New players are some of my favorite kind of players because y'all all take chances that some of us more experienced players would not. You would think I would go, you know, pull up maybe like my pictures of Scotty for her freckle pattern, but nah, we're just going to have fun with it and it's going to turn out however it's going to turn out. Yeah, they're simple on paper, but so much fun and Arcane Archer brings in a little bit of the spells and stuff that I like because you know I love playing archery characters. It's going to give me the flexibility to help. That's kind of the biggie. This paint is very, this paint is juicy and not in a good way. Wow. That came out really thin with a lot of medium in it and it shouldn't have. I just used that paint. So we're going to wipe this off and I'm going to get a little bit more. And I'm going to shake this bottle even more. I thought this was the one that I just used. I might have used a different color. And this one's just close. But that was very, very thin. That is still very, very thin. Some of this medium off the top. All right. We go into the nip knot. I'll be right back. while I roll the fuck over here and shake this with the actual paint shaker. I just gotta move stuff out of the way because I have stuff piled up in front of it that I was using today. Sorry for the noise. I'll fix the noise in a second. I just realized my microphone settings aren't open and that's probably picking up everything instead of what it's supposed to pick up. But yeah, Geese, I'm super interested to hear what you decide to play. Way too much water in my water cup. See her. Dude. Just got up and rolled around and like knocked my microphone halfway across my desk.
Sorry, I, the paintbrush, as I was setting it down, I shook a little bit and I ended up with a glob of paint on here instead of just one little freckle, so I had to fix it. Because what happens to gingers in the sun? They freckle. go to bed just not under my desk doggo is having a day y'all splash water everywhere. This thing is, I feel this way, 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 way too much. I'm going to get my paint water jug and switch out some of this water and I'm going to take this off here so I don't knock. I hit this paintbrush because it was in a holder on my thing and it just like knocked the water everywhere because my paint cup is too full. And I knew it was too full when I filled it up and brought it in here, but I'm like, eh, I'm not going to waste the water. I'm wasting the water. very valid way of doing it. A lot of people do stuff like that. They'll like come to the table with a couple of different concepts. I do mine the exact opposite though. I come up with a story for my character and then I figure out a way to make them fit whatever class is needed at the table. Like my Blue Rose character, I went in expecting her to be the healer, but then somebody else also wanted to be a caster. And I'm like, well, I could also do X, Y, Z with her and still fit within like what I want to do. And then I ended up being the healer anyway. Which, by the way, you can watch us tonight over on the GR crew with the great Rafiki, who should definitely shout out his own channel so that people will come watch our show. Aw, yay! That's awesome. I love that. I'm gonna take this off of here. I fully laid Scotty down on the wet palette. I'm okay. Let's try this again one more time with feeling. What do we say?
in like little lines and not little dots. I think this brush's tip is bent. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a scrubby brush. I'm gonna wipe all of these freckles off. As best as I can get them off. And we are going to go do, we're gonna do paint splatter. And do paint splatter freckles instead of hand drawn freckles. dry we're gonna move over to my mini for a little bit and let Scotty dry we're gonna do yield splatter for her yeah I can't tell if there's a truck backing up or if it's like one of the printers downstairs making noise but Seeger is freaking out. which which Scotty I paint if I have to do if I'm gonna end up doing the paint splatter because I can stand the volleyball model up on its own and go straight down with the freckles because it'll be all on where she's getting the most sunburnt Welcome in. <laughs> Cats are like, yeah, whatever the squirrel's outside, we don't care. it's in their domain and then it's a problem yeah meanwhile Ripley and Seeger you exist outside of our home bark 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 for my sins.
This is gonna be real fun to paint. I'm excited. It's already primed. We spray primed it before I started painting. Though I do wish it was my favorite resin because my favorite resin out there comes, um, it's super high detailed. It's designed for like tabletop miniatures and you don't need to prime it. But no, she was primed before I got started. We spray prime pretty much everything out in the garage. Yeah, it's fantastic, but it's really hard to get right now because of the war in the Ukraine, because of where it's manufactured. It's also super flexible. I think we have a couple of clips out there of me on, like, a really skinny arrow like this, basically bending it in half and it not breaking. I forgot me for my birthday. Because Cypher bought me these. So we're going to try these out. Mind me for a minute while I'm just like actually pulling these paints out. I'm 
don't know if it has all of the colors that I'm going to need for her, but it has a good bit of them. I'm just going to pull out a bunch of them and just have them sitting here on my desk and we'll go from there. Yes, new paints. A wash or a paint? It's very thin though, so. This might actually be a wash. Ooh, all of these paints might just be real thin. Let me get this onto my mixer and see what happens. Sorry for buzzy noises. very close to the color that I was using so let's see how this one does these are very thin paints too so we have an ad you know what we have an ad starting in just a couple minutes I'm gonna go ahead and take my break real quick um, so nobody gets uh, locked behind content with the ads. We'll try out the new paints when I get back. So everybody get up, stretch, go get some water, go take care of yourselves. Uh, be back here in like three to five minutes. Um, we'll take a quick break and then get back with the new paints and we'll see how they do. Uh, I don't want to get started on them and then have to stop or like have people miss stuff because there's ads running. So um, thank you for Twitch for actually giving me the warning for once. Uh, I'll be back in like five minutes. So everybody get up, stretch, refill your waters, get some food if you need it, take your meds if you haven't taken your meds, and I will see everybody back here in just a few minutes. Also, for anybody who's interested in what's coming up content-wise, I now have added my Adepticon paint list to the BRB reel. Have fun looking at my chaos.
All right, welcome back, y'all. I'm sorry the ads started late. It was weird. Um, so while they were running, I was mixing paint. Phoenix, I hope you have a good time with coursework. I hope everything is going well there. Getting a few drops of paint of different colors I need for like her shirt, her skin, and her hair because that's where I'm starting here. Let me get my gloves back on so I don't end up rubbing the primer off. I'm back to wearing these gloves because at this point uh, I had said those other ones were a little small. With how long my nails have gotten, also please perceive how pretty this polish is. With how long my nails have gotten, my vinyl gloves don't fit anymore. So I'm back to the large ones that are slightly too large for me. Hey V, welcome in. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to add pictures of Stompy Boy to the uh, to the reel over here. I'm gonna have to get those added at some point in the near future. Uh, maybe on my next break. So this week I'm streaming today, I'm streaming tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday is really iffy. Uh, Wednesday is the day.tm. Um, content warning, like huge content warning for loss of a child just putting that out there while I discuss this real quick. Um, Wednesday would have been my daughter's 14th birthday. And um, it also would have been Tank's 13th birthday. So this is a really hard week for me. Plus there's other stuff going on that I can't really talk about publicly that is a juxtaposition of the unfairness of the world really hardcore in a lot of ways. Um... And I am feeling away about a lot of things, so I may not be here Wednesday. If I'm here Wednesday, I will either be working on one of these two pieces, or I might be just sitting here chilling, doing a work and lurk day, repotting all of my Citadel paints, because I need to do that. And that's really cathartic to just sit there and pour paint from one thing into another. So that's also a possibility. We're gonna see how I'm feeling on Wednesday morning. And if I'm gonna stream, I'll just put it out on socials and go live. Um, I'm not gonna make the decision until stream time on Wednesday and see how I'm feeling. Um, I also have a bunch of stuff to film, so there's that too, but that's content warning over just letting everybody know that Wednesday is iffy for that reason. Normally I would do a big fundraiser around it, however, I'm going to be on a fun, multiple fundraising stuff this week that I'm either on or going to be raiding into. Um, like Friday is uh, Dr. Rhino's stream anniversary, and he's doing a huge um, giveaway, but he's also doing a fund for his local animal shelter where he got both of his dogs. Um, as his stream anniversaries, he's doing a big thing there. Um, they don't have a Tiltify set up, so he's doing everything through their website and just having people like DM him, you know, proof that you sent them money. <laughs> you don't even have to put addresses or anything on there. You just have to have your name and what you sent them. Um, and then he's going to have like a wheel of donations. Um, and he's going to be doing some really, really cool giveaways. And then on, uh, the GR crew on Saturday night, Frank is doing a fundraiser that I'm going to be on the one shot for so excuse me I have to burp really bad and it's stuck excuse me oh my god um see your stop go back to sleep oh he's a dog um so yeah so I, Wednesday is iffy as to whether or not I'm gonna stream however I am going to be on Frank's channel tonight I'm gonna be on Frank's channel on Saturday night um we're gonna have a bunch of stuff going on so all my things, making sure everything is doing what it's supposed to be. I'm going to get a little bit of water and hydrate. So yeah, Wednesday's iffy, but if I am on, I'll either be painting or repotting stuff because I have a lot of Citadel paints to repot at this point. All right. So this is my little character. Her name is Junie. Um, this piece is going to have like almost no color on it except for her bow
Junie, it's short for Juniper. She's a half elf. Her mom is a high elf, and her stepdad, who she calls dad, is her um, is a halfling. So it's Juniper Brandylark. She has a halfling last name. She was raised in, in uh, around a, her halfling family. She knows her dad is human, and that is all she knows about her her bio dad. He was a hero and an adventurer, and he never came home one day. And we're leaving that up to the DM to play around with. just going to stick to the gloves. <laughs> color palette's going to be really, really tame, except for her bow. Um, part of the lore around her and where she's from is she's from a part of the world that, like, color doesn't really exist that isn't, like, green, brown, or gray, or blue sky. That's it. There's no flowers. You sometimes get really bright, colorful sunsets, but there's nothing that you can touch that's color. So she has a small obsession with flowers. And art, she loves art. Like the place that she's come from, um, the town she's from is called Never Blossom. Uh, she lives next to a forest that is very, very dense and dark. So it's like a, it's like a triangulated point in the foothills of the mountains, but the sun sets behind the mountains, so she almost never sees sunset colors. And the um, the forest is to the east, so she never sees sunrise colors. And then it's right up against the, the highlands, which are called the colorless highlands, because it's literally just gray and rock with the occasional pops of green plants.
Everything's just dusty and rocky and... They live on foraging more than farming, though there is some farming. Um, hey, Lorna, thank you. I am super excited about it. I dropped my paintbrush because I nicked this. may have to pull her off of here to paint the other side of her hand, but... Did you? Yeah, I'm really happy about all of the things. letting me flavor it kind of fun because she is an arcane archer. So her bow is a magical bow without it being a magic bow. Like she doesn't have a magic item. It's just a fun stealthy thing that she can carry around where she has like a little stick that sits on her waist pouch or in one of her waist pouches that she could just pop out and click a button and then like a magical bow pops out. Made of pure like arcane energy. Obviously, thank you so much for popping in to say congrats. I appreciate it. I am very, very excited. I'm very happy about it. It was incredibly unexpected. Um, my anxiety was through the roof by the time they got to like the seventh or eighth entry. I'm like, uh, what? Because they only had like 14, they said, and they only showed 13. So the count might have been off. I'm like, I'm going to be so mad if they get all the way to the end of this. And then they're like, oh shit, we forgot Panda. And then they announced the, the amateur winner. And then I'm like, oh my God, I won something. What the fuck? I was like pacing my office. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I was completely freaked out. Because like I said, I had no expectations to win anything. I was doing this with the hope of getting really good quality feedback. Discord server um, for Thunderhead. I think I've actually got a good shot at winning that. 
because people were just really, really hype about it, and I'm super excited. Like, like I said, like for me, a win at Adepticon is people getting super excited over my stuff. A win for me is more people showing up here to sh see the stuff that I paint. You know? Yeah, Thunderhead's a, Thunderhead's a good dude. Like, you know, it's hard on Twitch because, you know, the mini painting community is really small and there are some really shitty things about the mini painting community, like the fact that they overuse ableist language. That's a, that is a standard that we have set here to not use it, to actively work on using it. It's not something that has permeated those parts of the community yet. My hope is more of those people will come hang out here. And as they come hang out here, we'll learn from our example. And when I meet a lot of these people in person, I can be like, yo, you know, I get it that it's ingrained in everybody but I know you're the type of person that's trying to do better. Maybe we don't with the ableist language. I feel like when we get to stuff like Adepticon and I meet some of these people one-on-one -on -one and we're like hanging out at a party or having dinner or just chilling, I'm gonna have a bigger effect than sitting in one of their chats being like, hey, could you not say stupid so much? You know what I mean? Like the hope is, is to set the good example and then one-on-one -on -one in person, start talking to people about, maybe this is a thing we can get to permeate the whole community and make it better as a whole. That's my hope anyway. Sorry, I know it's out of frame. This is much smaller than what I normally work on, so. But overall, in the terms of the mini painting community, I'm starting to find a lot of people that I really, really enjoy hanging out with um, in their streams. So like, Zambies is great. Um, she's actually kind of local to me. Rhino is great. He lives uh, downstate from me. Um, Witty is great. Jamie is great. Evan or Walter's Workshop is great. Um, Thunderhead has been, for somebody that reads as simple, like beardy white dude on Twitch, he's actually pretty cool and he's actively trying to do better and he like sat there even last night and was talking about we used to call it this but we shouldn't because that makes us sound like assholes and we're using better language by calling it this now um you know like all we can hope is that people continue to do better and I'm hoping that by setting a good example you know yeah Zambies is great Rhino is great Witty is hilarious um that's another mini that I need to paint that I will absolutely forego a competition piece for. And that is, uh, that is my Whittle Goblin. I haven't painted it yet. That has to be done by Adepticon for no other reason that I'm really hoping everybody brings their pieces. Because I've mentioned it and a lot of people are on board with it. All of us bring our Whittle Goblin miniatures and get Witty to sit in like a, sit at a table with all of them around her. So yeah, catching streams is really difficult with time zones, especially when you have people that stream at night um, and you're like at night in the U.S. But that's why a lot of people miss mine too, is I stream right in the middle of the day. And that's a very conscious choice because I'm trying to bridge the gap between when the morning mini painters go off and the evening mini painters start in the hopes of catching some more raids and have, filling that gap because there's not a lot of people that stream in the afternoon. So I'm actually starting to think about starting a little bit later um, and streaming like 1 to 5.30 just to push into that middle time zone a little more because it means I can hang out with people in the morning, watch a bunch of streams, be around to, to mod for folks who I mod for and then be able to stream in the middle of the afternoon and then raid people dinner time that are going on, like that are East Coast and have already had dinner. Hey, Negative Charisma, speaking of awesome mini painters. Welcome in. How are you doing today?
thank you so much. I'm, dude, I'm so excited about it. Like, I was in my office screaming last night. I didn't expect to win shit. It was like only the third competition I've ever entered. I didn't expect to win a damn thing. I'm like, you know, FMLA, but okay. I, I feel that. My, my partner's home today because he's not feeling good from work. So I get that. Um... But yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to win shit. I was, I literally went in expecting I'm going to do okay. I might have a shot at basing. I might have a shot at community faves. If they put, put it out publicly and my community shows up real hard, I'm like, I'm going to get really good feedback so I can get better going into more competitions. And I'm sitting there and then they start handing out awards and they haven't shown mine yet. I'm like, what? <laughs> One of the kiddos had a play date. That's awesome. Negative Christmas, do you stream? I see your work everywhere, but I didn't know if you streamed or not. Dude, when I saw your piece for Mecha May, I knew I was fucked. I'm like, there ain't no way. <laughs> I called it very, very early that you were 100% gonna win it. That thing was badass. You have it in like a year, got it. This is my full-time gig. <laughs> Lorna, you do great. You do really, really great work. Awesome. Well, if one of my mods is around, give a negative charisma a shout out, please. And we will all make sure that we're following you so we can, you know, hang out when you get back to streaming. Thank you. But wait, I'll go grab I'll go grab my Taco Bell uh, and show y'all what I'm talking about when, in terms of what the feedback does for me. So for those of you who don't know, I paint with a disability. I have a... Uh, where are you? Oh shit, there you are. I have multiple physical and a couple of uh, mental disabilities. Um, a lot of it stemming from my childhood, but also a lot of it because I was in a really bad car accident and suffered a really bad brain injury. So this was my Mecca May piece. I painted this in eight days. And I got really good feedback. Um, Thunderhead was harsh. Fair. Thunderhead is always fair, but harsh on this piece. But I took everything that he said from this and applied it to Stompy Boy. And Stompy Boy, which is this one, this was 100 to 150 hours over the last three weeks. And I'm sorry about the blood clot. I know this stuff is awful. Um, if you'd have entered this, you probably would have won. I see, I've seen your work. Hydrate. I got you, Tim. Thank you. But yeah, this is my little stompy boy. But the, I mean, this is the difference of a few months of getting really solid feedback on everything that I did here. Because I tried a bunch of new techniques on here and we had a really big problem with my primer. Um, I had primer problems with this one too because the day I went to prime this, when it was done, it was 102 degrees outside. Not including the humidity. But like, you can see the difference. Cause I took everything that Thunder had ripped apart here and applied it to here. Feedback's super, super important. Always hot there. I don't, I'm not sure where you're at. We're in a, I live outside of Chicago. Um, so, you know, 102, oh, well, yeah, there you go. 102 with a heat index that was like 120 was a lot. someplace where it's going to be safe and not fall and get broken and then I'm going to get it's actually really warm in my office now so I'm going to get out of my hoodie before I sit here and sweat to death 
But yeah, I have really, really bad hand tremors. Um, so I have to paint incredibly slow. And I always worry with competitions, like, I, am I going to get this done? <laughs> Knock and paint over. What else is to do? What a mess today, y'all. Are you? I'm starting that. I start my golden deem. Are you coming to Adepticon? Am I going to get to meet you at Adepticon? Because that will be rad. Awesome. It's going to be my second. I was there last year, so I'm local-ish. Um, I was there last year, but I kind of wussed out and ran home a bunch. Yeah, that too. Um, I ran home a bunch. I was able to go because I live locally, so I didn't have to pay for a hotel room. This year, I'm staying on site to force me to stay at the hotel and like actually go interact with people. Because I was like the little awkward bean. Well, big awkward bean. I am pandasized. I don't joke about that. Um, I was like, no one's going to want to talk to me. I'm just going to in and out and go say hi to the people that I know and love and meet a few people and then go home. This year, I'm making myself stay. And like, if I start to get overwhelmed, I can go up to my hotel room, take a half hour breath and not drive the 45 minutes home and then go, eh, I'm not going back. So, well, awesome. Welcome to uh, Chicago in March. Please pack for everything from 90 degree weather to like 30 degree weather because we definitely had like an 80 degree day and a day that it snowed last year. <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. I'm awkward and roughly panda size. I'm very easy to spot at a distance. Feel free to just yell panda across the con. I'll hear you. Yeah. My grandparents lived in Arizona for a really long time. Mm-hmm. All right, Lorna, enjoy foods. Are you doing a lot of entries for uh, GD and um, Resin Beast, or are you just doing a couple? I'm being very, very ambitious with what I'm trying to do. Two for each? I'm slating myself to do a couple for each, um, but I'm trying to prioritize, so I'm trying to cheese it a little bit. My biggest goal, because I don't expect to win anything at, at Adepticon, because I know the quality of the paints. I've seen them firsthand. That's not my work. I know I'm constantly improving. I might have a shot here and there at a few things. I'm trying to focus on the competitions that people are going to see my work the most and that I might have a shot in because there's not a lot of entries. So like Resin Beast, I'm aiming for unit first, because last year for units, there were only six. Or maybe it's diorama. dioramas, I think, was only six. And then there was only like eight units. And there's five awards. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my God, the mail must be here. So anyway, I have two dogs. Robert James Seeger. That is enough. The mailman is not going to bite you. And it's certainly not going to bite mommy. Come here. Hi, Ripper. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. You want to come say hi? No. Where's your brother? Brother, come here. Come say hi to chat. Sometimes he'll come say hi to everybody, but I think he's angry because the mailman's inside. <laughs> uh, which one? This one? We used to actually, so my partner is, um, owns a 3D print shop. Uh, we actually used to be licensed retailers for Bite the Bullet. Uh, we now have, I think it's, it's Twin Goddess and I can't remember the other one. Bite the Bullet has gone kind of really far into the We Love Blizzard a little too much to a point of almost copying work. Um, 
And that's, mm, that makes us a little, yeah. Um, so we have a license for Twin Goddess. Um, I can't remember who else. And B, I don't know if you're listening or not. But yeah, I've painted a lot of Bite the Bullet stuff. Um, I paint a lot of Twin Goddess stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a piece for their quarterly competition right now. I'm painting, I'm painting Beach Bikini Scotty. Um, I'm waiting for her to dry back down because I'm going to do a different technique to do her freckles. So. Uh, did they announce what? Twin Goddess is quarterly? It's always quarterly. It's every, th it's every three months. So there's one that's due the 30th, and then the next one will start October 1st and run through December 31st. Yeah, Bite the Bullet I haven't been, I haven't really been messing with. But I'm working on Twin Goddess. This is Scotty the Barbarian. This is number four. No, how many models does she have? There's the Barbarian, Barbarian 1, Barbarian 2, Volleyball, and Bikini. So this is the fifth model. She's my favorite model on earth. She's gonna pop up down here in a minute. I've painted two versions. I've painted both the Barbarian versions. I actually painted the second version for their um, Kickstarter. All right, I think her hands are about as good as they're gonna get. And I'm probably being a little bit too picky for a mini that is literally just for me to go sit on the table when I'm playing d and Especially because we're not doing anything at, at like actual scale. You never, oh. Wait, here, I'm gonna make you feel like world's better. Hang on a minute. I, I'm gonna show off my ADHD. Um, so this one has been sitting unfinished for a hot minute. Um, I have all three of these bad boys from Gloomhaven that are like in various stages of completion. I have this Scotty sitting here. I have the other half of the volleyball. Um, <laughs> Let's see, what else do I got here? Oh, I got the I got the the sexy girlfriends. Both of them are still sitting here. Um <laughs> Wait, what else do I got? Where's my rainbow chaos knight? I know that's in here, not done yet. He's still sitting here like in partial completion from pride. <laughs> Don't mind me. You're trying out witch song miniatures? Cool. Also, hi babe. Yeah, I have so many unfinished miniatures and I have like 20 more that are sitting here in this drawer primed. <laughs> I'm a mess. Uh, my, my, my psychophage is sitting behind me on my uh, to be painted. That one's not done yet either. <laughs> I feel you on not finishing minis. But I really don't have a choice now because I'm trying to get ready for Adepticon and I start the painting for that over the next couple of weeks. As a matter of fact, I'm ordering my stuff um, from Conquest today. Because I'm doing two pieces. I'm gonna So for Resin Beast, I'm doing two pieces from Conquest and I'm doing two pieces from um, Creature Caster. You don't print for business anymore? Yeah. I actually think I'm gonna use cast and play scenery for my diorama for uh, for resin based. So I emailed them to ask if it was okay, but I'm gonna do the trickster of Malefico, but I'm gonna do the two piece set and they're gonna let me do that as a, uh, as a diorama because it's two separate pieces. Um, I'm gonna make them, build them like a little cave. I love epic basing. I love epic basing. Do they have like walls and stuff? Or is it just bases? Yeah, the print store literally just pays for the hobby. Which is good with the number of printers that that man has in the basement. Negative charisma, save me. Save me from this man. Do you have a link to your dice store? by the way, uh, DM it to me. Cause uh, we have links off because, so unlike a lot of folks in the mini painting community, because of some certain things and content I used to have, we have had a lot of bad faith stuff get posted here. So it's mods and, and VIPs that can post links right now. Um, I'm considering changing that. Cause I think we've built a pretty solid community at this point. <laughs> 
But if you DM it to me, I'll, I'll post it in chat for you. I was firmly uh, in a place where I was a part of like the hate raids and stuff. Over the last couple of years, including some really ones with some real significant numbers. Um, so we have to be extra careful. Awesome. Did you DM it to me on uh, Twitch or did you DM it to me on Discord? I like this little pain on my ear, like right here. I don't know what it is. Irking my soul. y'all I know y'all are some dice nerds in this chat go look oh it's just my okay it's just my kids teacher sending home the homework for the week I always panic when the thing pings and it's the kids school now Oh, there you go. Boop. Supposed to redirect, but didn't. Okay. I love your dice so much. I'm like, yeah. Every time I see new ones, like on the storm report, I get all giddy about it because I am a dice dragon. I've moved so far past goblin. I don't know if you follow Critical Role at all, but the Bailey bag of hoarding, I have one that's full and I have another one ready to get started. Yeah, the tie-dye ones are just like the vibe, right? They scream Fairwick so hard. But everything's just so cute. I love the mushroom ones. Like a lot, a lot. The tie-dye ones have big Glicks vibes. But yeah, I love your, the ones that you showed off last night were just like, oh my God, with the little pumpkins in them. My little nerdy Halloween and fall love and self. things for reasonable prices there are stuff here that i will tell you right now i have paid way more for dice those are incredibly re reasonable prices you sell your stuff for your price and if other dice makers have a problem with it too bad I'm actually kind of high key in love with the shadow orchid ones. Because that's kind of the colors for this mini. <laughs> well, you buy them then. DC. 
DC, did you get a shout out or not? I can't remember if one went off or not because I'm like, I'm still in oh my god what happened mode. Somebody beat me to it. Thank you. Y'all, seriously, I didn't think I had any shot of winning anything. So I'm still just kind of beside myself, like giddy beside myself. It gives me hope. Because like I said, like my whole thing going into Golden Demon and Resin Beast and anything else that I enter at Adepticon, I want somebody to see my work and it drags them into this stream. Or it gets posted on their socials because they just think it's fucking cool. The way chat reacted when my picture went up had me like cheesing like the weirdest kid in the world. Like I don't normally get reactions like that to my stuff. I was stoked. Yeah, and that's fair. And I mean, if people don't like it, then don't. They can price their stuff how they want to price it. Like, just say you wish you could afford the stuff and go. <laughs> but I feel that. I, under I, I totally get it, because I'm, you know... At the core of everything that I do, I started on Twitch as a fiber artist. And when people hear how I price my stuff, there's a lot of people that are either A, think it's too high, or B, think it's too low, or C, just want to say I could get it from China for cheaper. Yeah. Exactly that. I want to be able to finish enough stuff to take with me and feel really good about my entries. You know, I have a pretty extensive list of stuff that I am hoping to do, but then I did the math and I got to paint like one mini a week between now and March if I want to enter everything I want to enter. So I'm just prioritizing the stuff that usually has lower, uh, that usually has lower numbers of entries, but are still going to have a lot of people looking at it. And my thing is, is I don't know that I'm going to be at the same quality, especially because again, I paint with a hand trimmer and a disability and like... I can't paint as fast as most people, nor can I paint as steady as most people, so I have to be very meticulous in what I'm going to enter, right? So I've prioritized what are the things that are going to have lower numbers of entries that I think that I could paint really well. And I'm just going to start there. And I would really like to get started on my Creature Caster stuff, however, they're restocking the paint in October. I'm probably gonna order some of their base color, a set of their base colors and the models that I need, but then work on my stuff for um, GD and um, and my stuff from uh, Conquest in the meantime. Hi, Bobby, are you okay? Do you wanna say hi to everybody? Mommy will put chat on so you can jump up here and say hi. Do you wanna say hi? <gasps> Who's a good boy? Do you got opinions? Go brr, brr. Do you want chat to get your opinions? What are you doing? Hi. What you doing? Come here. Do you want to say hi to everybody? I'll see if I can get the boy to jump up here. Hold on. Come here, puppy. Ignore my mess. Hi, come here. Hi. Who's the goodest boy ever? Who is mama's good boy? Give me this foot and give me this foot and stand up and come here and tell everybody that you are the goodest of boys. Say hello, I am the bup. So this is Seeger, this is my dog. Can I kiss it? No. I get no kisses from you. Do you not love mama anymore? Are you mad because I won't let you lick your foot until it hurts? No kisses. Uh, I'm gonna order the Apex Queen as my singular, like, small model. Um, and then I'm gonna order, 
I forget. It's old kingdoms. It's one of the, the units that ha are like the, the stone statues with weapons. I'm gonna order one of those two sets. How many kisses do you need to know that you are the most loved doggo in the world? Say just one more, Mama. Oh no, was that enough? You know now. All right, there you go. Why don't you go downstairs and get Papa? Hey, stop licking your foot. You don't get to jump up here and get love, and then all of a sudden, some like y'all, my hair is a mess. I'm that freaking headband. Go lay down. You don't need to lick my foot. Hi. Are you looking for attention? Mama goes on break in eight minutes, and then I will put you in the yard that is not the front. And you are gonna hit me to say the words so that you freaking. He's got his head in my lap, y'all. Can I go back to painting now, sir? Go bed. Yes, you go bed. Mommy needs to stand up and sit on her foot like a normal queer and then go back to painting. Puts his head in my hand because he loves me more. No. Go to bed. Be a go to bed, buff. No one. Stop licking your feet. Something wrong with this y'all. The vet will tell us tomorrow night what it is, but there's something wrong. It's real pretty. Um, I know that the other one, not the drum, the other long neck dino is what uh, Evan is painting. Walter's Workshop. I love them so much. They're such cool minis. I don't think I'm gonna do any like really large models. I'm gonna stick to like units and smaller and medium models. Medium models are kind of my bread and butter, like this size right here. This is about the size that I like to paint at the most. <coughs> That's why I'm partial to Space Marines, because they're large, a little larger. Yeah, like 75 millimeter scales, right about it. So anything that's a little on the larger side, I like to really lean into. Like even this is scaled up a little bit, so it makes it easier for me to paint. must be coming upstairs because Ripley just bolted out of my office. Yeah, I think my focus is going to be the unit and the diorama are going to be the two biggies. Uh, I'm going to paint a rhino for vehicles for GD because y'all, I've fallen in love with this paint scheme. I'm going to use this paint scheme and just push the contrast just like uh, Thunderhead said I should for my rhino. I'm going to do the Sororitas rhino and do the sisters of the, uh, our sisters of the um, Shameless Dawn. Or Sisters of the Shameless March. It's also planner week for anybody who's going to be ordering uh, your plan, the same planner that I do every year for, you know, Affiliate reasons. I'm going to be filming the, uh, I'll be filming the preview stuff and reviews um, this week. It's going to go up on my second YouTube. And then next Tuesday, we'll sit down and go over everything on stream before I start painting. But next, uh, next Monday when we paint, y'all are going to come on stream and right here under my picture, like right about here, there's going to be a timer with days till Adepticon. <laughs> And I, how many projects have I finished? <laughs> I 
be a daily reminder to get color on a mini. Baby, all right? And sorry if I get quiet, because I'm very much in the uh, in the painting zone right now. Seriously though, y'all, knowing that Adepticon is coming, this feels like a guilty pleasure to sit here and work on this. Knowing that I should be working on things. But I feel like giving myself a couple of days to paint something for my home game is, you know, it's earned at this point. I did a lot of painting for that competition. And I would like to have something on the table. Because we don't like play with maps or anything. So scale doesn't really matter. You just have to have like a mini or something to represent your character. And then he's got like little like cards and stuff that are on the table that represent the monsters. And it's, it's just a really casual, not super overdone, but I want to have like a mini for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it. it. It's, you know, it's like the calm before the storm because I'm I'm being very ambitious with what I want to enter. There's like 15 competitions that I'm like, I'm gunning for just to get my work out in front of people, you know, because I'm, I'm in a position with streaming where because I started in a kind of different vein, when I switched over to full-time mini painting, I lost more than half of my audience. A lot of people were like, ah, you don't do fiber arts anymore? Bye. And that's fine, like content creator life, you know, but you know, I want to be able to build it back up. So I'm kind of, kind of being very ambitious, but like I said, I'm prioritizing, like these are the ones, yeah, there are. So like, there's the worthy, um, if they bring it back this year, which is Marvel crisis protocol, they've got like four different entries you can do. And I love that scale because they're a little bit larger minis. Um, oh, what else is there? I had them all pulled up. Well, y'all will see them in a minute. Um, P3 Grandmaster is one of them. Um, oh God, what's the other one? Uh, God, I can't remember the name of all of them, but I'm going to go on break in a minute. And I have, uh, I have like the list of stuff that I'm like real interested in on my BRB reel. Um, and since ads are going to pop here in like 30 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and take my break. I'll be back in like four minutes. Um, I encourage everybody to get up, stretch, drink, some water, get some food, take care of yourselves and be back here in like five minutes. And we can kind of go over the list. Um, I just have to remember the names of them because there's, there's a few different ones and I'm hoping it's going to be the same ones this year. So, all right, BRB y'all.
Look at me sitting back down right as ads uh, pop off of there. Uh, Brush with Death, that was the other one. The P3 Grandmaster one, I like their minis a lot. Privateer Press, I really, really like their minis. And the fact that it's Monster, Monster Apocalypse is one of them. There's a mini from there that I really, really want to paint. So that one's just a, I really want to paint it, so I'm painting it. Ripper, what you doing? You are a fan. What's your dad? Your papa's home. Are you happy papa's home? Oh, you're mad because your brother's finally eating his breakfast and you already ate yours. And you're mad because you can't steal his. She stole his breakfast yesterday, y'all. I've never picked up any of their minis, but I saw them after Mecca May. Um, it was one of the brands that Evan was recommending for, for people. And I saw this one and I'm going to, I'll pull her up. Hang on. Uh, oh lord, their side is running slow as hell. Hopefully their sight shows up. Come on now. There we go. Their stuff just looks fun. That's kind of part of this. Is their stuff looks fun. Yeah, their stuff came up when we were discussing the possibility of doing Kaijun right after Mecha May. Which I swear to God, I hope they do next year. Well, they don't have the mini that I wanted to paint on this site. I wonder if it's in the store. I don't see her. I can't remember the name of the mini. <laughs> Their minis are just fun. I love like, well, there you go. If you do it, let me know. I will definitely paint for it. Cause I went full-time mini painting this year, like right after Adepticon. After I got home from Adepticon for that weekend, I was like, this is what I want to do. I love this community. I love the people I met. I had a lot of fun. This is what I want to do. It is taking me so long to scroll through all of these minis. There she is. Star Princess Aries. That's that's fair. My partner is my partner is our our breadwinner. As a matter, of, so we have our adopted daughter is disabled, um, and also our oldest daughter was super involved with uh, sports when she was in high school. So we kind of decided very early, like even before we were married, that I was going to stay home so I could be there to go to college first, was finish my degree, and then we became foster parents and then we ended up adopting our daughter. Um, and she needs so much care that I really can't work. Um, and then we got hit with the pandemic and we were stuck home and I was teacher and mom and like 
I'm like, I need something to do. And then I found out that crafting was a thing on Twitch. And he's like, you could do that. Let me buy you some cameras. And it was over from there. We try not to use stupid here. <laughs> That's something I was actually talking about earlier. We just said we try, we're trying to get rid of ableist language. Um, so if you use like wild or ridiculous, we'd appreciate it. Um, but I want to parry Star Princess Ares because she's adorable and she's cute. <laughs> My kid loves this model. She saw it the other day and was like, ooh. My little one, we're trying to get into mini painting. She's up and down. She'll like paint for a little bit and do really well and then be like, eh, I don't want to do this anymore. But yeah, so loads of stuff. And he, yeah, his schedule is, is wild. He, he's home today because one of his meds didn't get filled and he was like, woke up feeling like shit. And he's like, I'm not going to work today. But I couldn't do this if he didn't make the money that he made. So I am very, very grateful. I'm just hoping to, you know, turn this into something where I'm bringing in at least a, enough money to pay for the hobby, you know, and uh, to pay for the hobby, pay, keep the stream afloat and start, you know, at some point start to help out with a little bit more of the bills. A little bit here and there. I was doing real well for a while, but when I changed over to uh, full-time mini painting, I lost a lot of support. Which is fair. People don't want to watch it. They don't want to watch it. I'm gonna sit here and paint though. <laughs> Normally, oh yeah, no, that's, that's a lot. No, he doesn't do nights. He's he's out super early in the morning, but. Seeger, I swear to God, dog. You're gonna lick your toes off before we can get you to the vet. He's gonna go flying and we'll be in your office then. That's fair. I love that for you. We got very, very lucky and were able, we got into a position where we were able to buy without a huge down payment right before the housing like went out of control. We can't ever leave this house. We could never afford to leave it now. I hope by the time that you are ready to buy, the prices have started to come back down and that you find excellent neighbors. And that when you buy your house, you're able to find something with space for your pressure pot if you're using <laughs> Pressure pots scare the hell out of me, y'all. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. And if you're able to save that much a year, that's incredible. I hope you're able to find something that you really love. We got lucky and we, we ended up building ours and oh boy. 12 out of 10, do not recommend if you're going through a builder and not like a private company. Scotty this week. Next week, um, if I've got some of the stuff for Adepticon, we may start that. If not, we might work on Glicks. We might finish up Glicks next week, just the edits that I want to do to her um, before PAX. Yeah. 
Yep. We looked, I looked the other day and the estimate on our house is like a little over 405 and we paid like 276 for it. We couldn't sell and move anywhere because the housing prices around here are so out of control. So they're gonna pop eventually. It's gonna be 2008 all over again. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's gonna be uh, near as bad, but I definitely think it's gonna happen. Like I keep people seeing people buying houses right now, and I'm like, why? Just wait. Unless you absolutely have to move, just wait. Yep. I don't think you're wrong. I think that's a valid way to look at it. I think it's, that's likely going to be the case for a lot of people. Uh-oh. Are you trying to Thunderdome or are you just playing with your bone? If you're going to Thunderdome, please be careful with your brother's foot. My dogs like to wrestle right in the middle of the stream. They're right about the time that they start to really start wrestling and making all the noise. Ripper, what are you doing? Go bed. She's got, she's like this four and a half foot long rope bone that she slings around like it weighs nothing. And she's just like whipping it around the living room right now, trying to get Seeger to play with her. anything fun this week? Anybody got fun plans? Friday they don't they have a new they've got like a new booster coming out later this month uh, or this month or next yeah or did it just come out I'm doing okay uh, I am actually going to be lining up to get my booster I think I'm going to aim for uh, um, which I think I'm going to aim for like mid-october either going to be mid-october or it's going to be uh well, I guess it kind of has to be because of my, my immune response to stuff. Just dropped. Got it. I was thinking about doing it during parent-teacher conferences. Yeah, the, the COVID booster. Um, a lot of us go to a lot of conventions, so... I want to get my COVID booster ahead of PAX, but I have really bad vaccine reactions, so I need like two or three weeks to recover. <coughs> yeah, exactly. I want to be all set for Pax U. Because, who oh boy, we're going to be busy that week. I've been asked to be on a few panels. We'll see what happens. One of them is on mini painting. I'm super stoked about it.
Yeah. I I feel that. We were super, super scared about my potential for blood clot issues with the boosters and stuff. Oh, nice. All of our Legos around here. That's another option, y'all, for Wednesday. If I decide I am going to stream, maybe I do a Lego set and just chill. Like some, because, you know, I've still got the one from Steven. I haven't done it yet. Because y'all, y'all know the theme around here. Look how cute he is. It was my birthday present from Steven. Okay, that's her corset, not her shirt. Okay. Kind of up under her arm. trying to make sure that there's paint on all the parts of the mini. One more coat of this mushroomy color. I love this color though. This, this like little mushroomish gray tan. Right? They're really cool looking minis and they're not very brazy. Like that's, that's exactly it, is they're not super pricey, but they're really fun. Uh, I know Brush for Hire is currently paint, uh, painting Grizzy, which is the Corgi. Y'all, this company has a Kaiju Corgi. love how she's just running around with like a busted ass uh, UFO as a skirt. I feel like she's going to be a lot of fun to paint. bust for their main like competition. I'm going to paint one of their busts because they're really, really cool. They have one that's really just fun. I feel like if it's a mini I feel is just really cool, I paint it better and I'm, I have more fun with it. So I'm kind of trying to focus like anything that I'm doing that I don't, you know, that I'm not excited about it is probably going to be held for last so I may not do it. And some of the stuff that I'm working on is going to be pretty basic stuff that I would have been painting anyway. I'm just going to paint it. Hey, Mickey Minis, welcome in. Um, then I'm, I'm just going to paint it to a higher scale than I would do for tabletop. Like anybody who watched the reel, you saw that I'm going to be painting the Ultramarines Primark as my, as my big GD single entry. The only reason I'm painting that one is one, I get it as part of the Imperium Magazine subscription. I will have the entire model by the end of November here and ready to assemble and with all the time on earth to paint it and two that's the army my partner chose because it's easy enough to paint and there's enough information out there so that we can learn how to play 40k together so 
I'm already going to be painting the Ultramarines anyway. I'll just step them up a little bit beyond high tabletop and hope for the best. I'm going to be painting them anyway. I might as well just enter them in a fucking competition. <laughs> Yeah, I've got the Leviathan box that I'm working my way through. So, but he wants he wants to do Ultramarines because I have so much Ultramarine stuff already. Because again, with Imperium Magazine, they send you everything you need for two 2,000 point armies plus bonuses if you have the premium subscription. And it's all Necrons and Ultramarines. Um, now, there, a lot of them are just plain Space Marines. However, the first few you get are actually carved shoulder pads for Ultramarines. And they send you all of the paints for their standard paint jobs and coloring. So I have all of the equipment I need for it already, except for one or two paints. Right, exactly. You know, I let him pick his chapter. I picked what I'm gonna do for my Tyranids, which I don't know if everyone's seen him. Let me go get him. I roll across my office because of my back. Um, come here, buggy boy. You are requested on stream. This is my paint scheme for my, my Tyranids. I'm gonna bump up all of this contrast like a lot more. I'm gonna lift it up to that really bright, bright pink. But this is my Tyranid paint scheme. If I could finish him, I might bring him. Cause I'm pretty proud of how he's looking. So getting there little by little. I love how all this came out. This was not easy to do. I had so many issues with the wash bubbling weird, but I was able to fix it pretty well. And then all of these like little veins in here. Some people say they're veins. Some people say they're lightning. I'm going to paint them as lightning. Um, and I'm going to paint them with this bright green. So it's gonna be like bright green and yellow lightning that shoot off of his body. So he's also a potential entry for um, GD if I if I finish him and like him better than Gilliman looks. So I'm leaving my options open. <laughs> hey, thank you. I'm leaving options open. I'm trying to kind of like maneuver around what I already own so that I don't have to buy so much. Um, like I'm going to enter a, one of the dual pieces for G GD because it's easy for me to just take two pieces I own. So I'm going to take, where is he? Um, I'm going to paint this one up against either a Tau or an Orc. I'm not sure which yet. Um, but I have like the Tau stuff from the premium and I have the Orc stuff for the premium and Orctober is a thing. So it might just be an Orc versus this guy and I can work through October working on um, my dual entry. I'm trying to base it around content that's going to get stuff that's going to get my content steam, stuff that's on theme, stuff I already own, and contests that are not always the most popular like big entries. Like the open competition and the single miniature competitions are always the most populous. So I'm trying to give myself a little wiggle room. You can do some streaming for Orktober? That's awesome. Let me know. I will be there. I will come through. I will raid if I'm on ahead of you. I I will always. Oh, nice. By who? If you don't mind my asking. Because I'm a nosy, nosy human. Ah, oh, 
sweet. Holy crap, that is rad. Wait, hold on. Let me open this and show everybody what's going on. Y'all, how cool is this? That is so fun. Oh my god. Yeah, I love that a lot. <laughs> That looks like that's going to be so much fun to paint. Yeah, sounds like it. I don't own an airbrush and I know nothing about airbrushing. It is my next big skill I wanna learn when I have the money to get a proper nice airbrush. Um, Cause I don't wanna, I know there's a lot of people that can do really, really excellent work um, with inexpensive airbrushes, but then a lot of folks upgrade. What on earth is going on? They just redid ad, ads manager behind the scenes. My stuff's already set up. Thank you, Twitch. Cheaper airbrush and a better compressor first? Okay. I also don't know how effective I would be to airbrush on stream because I don't really have a, the space for it where I paint. It would have to be a lot of stuff done off stream. I think. I'm not really sure. I, but it's something that I really interests me and that I really want to get into. And I'm hoping by the time Adepticon rolls around, I can take like a couple of the airbrushing classes. Just use it for priming and base coats and stuff. So it's like, okay. Just to kind of get the hang of it. that my partner is sitting somewhere taking notes on this because there's he so there's a mech he wants me to paint for him and it's huge and i told him deal was you want me to paint it i'll paint it you have to buy me an airbrush because i cannot brush paint that it's too big <laughs> uh, i don't have a lot of local comps because my local comps is gd uh, i am local to adepticon so there aren't a lot of really local stuff around here um, we have like a lot of paint nights and stuff and places you can go like sit and chill. I do a lot of online competitions for specific miniature companies that I paint for already. Um, or I like my partner has in our mini shop that we were licensed to sell. So like I do um, the quarterly one for Twin Goddess, um, which is open to anybody, by the way. If you have a Twin Goddess mini, you can enter the competition. Um, like this one right here, That's that was the first Scotty. She's one of my favorites. Um, she is in the basement right now because my partner won her in a raffle. <laughs> um, Twin Goddess is some of my favorite, my favorite minis. So this is the one that I'm painting for the current competition. I don't know if I'm going to go with this one or because I'm going to do her freckles as paint splatter and this one will stand up on its own. I may go with this version because they're both already painted to the same level, giving her a little bit of a sunburn. Um, I paint a lot of stuff for their things. Um, what else do I have sitting here that's Twin Goddess? 
So this one's also a twin goddess. I love her a lot. And then her girlfriend, where is her girlfriend? And then this is her girlfriend. I was gonna make them a little diorama. As you can see, the wash on this one got a little weird. I went real light on it and somehow it pooled really funny. I don't know if it had something to do with the medium or there was a reaction in the paint, but I'm probably gonna have to redo her skirt, uh, which is kind of why I left off on this one because I got really frustrated with it. Um, also Twin Goddess to go with the other volleyball piece. So the volleyball piece is part of a band called Tainted Mithril. These are the other two band members. This is Knox and Styx. Uh, let me ask, Briar, what resin did you use for these? I don't personally know because I know jack shit about the printers. <laughs> I know that they work and they give me lots of things to paint. This one's bite the bullet. This was my, this is my first foray into speed paint. You painted this one? I love this mini. This one actually inspired um, one of my D&D characters that I use for one shots. I saw her and was immediately like, yeah, no, I have to play her now. Yes, but without the top, got it. I don't usually paint the not safe for work ones on stream. You're terrified of painting skin? I love painting skin. It's one of my, skin and hair are two things that usually freak people out. It's my favorite stuff to paint. I love painting skin. And I think it's because I'm, I'm used to painting minis that aren't wearing a lot of clothes. <laughs> Yeah, I love the faces. I really wish I had more busts to paint. I love painting busts so much. Yeah, they used to do a bunch and then that now they don't and they've shifted so hard into like copying Blizzard's art style. And it's like, okay, can we please do something a little different than the same Night Elves that Blizzard has had for however long Warcraft has been out? I feel like in... Yeah, I think they both did, and I think kind of that's that's part of it. And at the but at the same time, as the last couple of years have gone on, they have gone straight up from clearly inspired by to basically making Warcraft characters, which is fine. But that's not what I want to paint. That's a part of my life that is the only thing I have left over from my years is literally being like a top ranked Warcraft player is that I married another Warcraft player. How long have I been painting for? Well, that is a, that is a complicated question for me because I started painting in 2019 and then I stopped. I was painting for like to just so I would have some finished minis and stuff for our homebrew because I was DMing for a group and then the pandemic hit and it was a whole thing. And then when I started streaming, I was not really streaming painting very often. I would stream like one mini every three or four months and that was all I was painting at the time. Um, but then this past year or so last summer, uh, Twin Goddess asked me to paint the new, their latest at that point version of Scotty for their Kickstarter for Battle uh, uh, Bardic Beatdown. Um, and I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just start painting some more minis. Um, and then I went to Adepticon in March of this year. And that's when I was like, okay, now it is really time for me to start taking this seriously. This is what I want to do. 
So I've been painting for a while off and on, but I didn't really start digging in and getting very serious with it until like March, like March, April of this year. Yeah, it's like months and months and months of Diablo stuff. And it's fine. They obviously have a market for it. They obviously have a lot of people that love that kind of stuff. It's just, it's not my jam on multiple levels. Um, Blizzard is a very sore spot for me right now because of everything going on with the multiple lawsuits. Um, you know, I am a survivor of assault and until people are really held accountable, I'm trying to stay away from Blizzard stuff. Like, I know there's wonderful people who still work for the company. I know that there's still a lot of people fighting to fix things from inside. But until the people that are in charge are held accountable. Never ending story inspired beneath sound delightful. I love that. I am also really hoping that more and more people start making, like, modern... Oh my god, a racing snail would be so fun. <gasps> or the tower. The ivory tower would be so cool. Monster of the Week campaign, right? Y'all know me. I play an 18-year-old high school cheerleader. There's like three cheerleader minis out there and most of them are not safe for work. That are any kind of decent quality. under the little corset thing that she's wearing in a couple of spots. I love that because it's such an honest detail, but at the same time, oh my god. Sorry if I have it out of frame. I have to have it close to me because I can't see. Um, I'm in a Monster of the Week campaign. There's not a lot for kids on bikes. And a lot of the stuff that's kids on bikes is very Stranger Things oriented. There's very, very little out there that's just general teenagers or general, like, urban. Like, our Monster of the Week campaign is set in 1982. Oh, yeah, no, it totally makes sense because it's popular. I just wish there, like, were stuff. And there's a lot of designers that are like, yeah, well, no one will buy it. And it's like, that's fair. It just sucks to be me. You know, even Hero Forge and stuff, they don't have a lot of those more urban stuff. And the stuff that is urban leads so hard sci-fi. Like, Tiffany runs around in, like, jeans with boots and, like, that's got a knife tucked in it. And, like, her boyfriend's sweatshirt. And occasionally her cheerleader top. She runs around like a normal kid. That's another reason why I keep entering the Twin Goddess, uh, the Twin Goddess painting competitions is I'd love to win one because if I win one, the prize is they will work with you to create a mini and I can have Tiffany made or I can have Nicolette made, one of the two. I'd say Glicks, but at this point it's a moot point because Revelry ended yesterday. I really was not expecting yesterday to be our finale. I thought we were going to have one more week. <laughs> But 
but it just so happens that because of a because of a thing that happened where we ended up having to go through a door that we didn't want to have to go through and because I had like a magical item that could open any door we walked into the final fight what what oh the twin goddess thing yeah, if you win their painting competition for the month, uh, they will work with you for the following month to create a mini um, of your design. Like, in their style, but they'll create it. It's part of why I enter it all the time. It'd be so cool to be able to just be like, here is my character for this specific campaign. Here is their art. Have fun. super cool thing that they do and they're such an underrated they're so underrated as a mini company i wish more people ascribed to their stuff and just bought it constantly like i know i'm sure you've heard of shiny all those prints that shiny is getting those are all for, for the most part from us he's fallen in love with their stuff to paint and he orders a bunch of it They, she, I don't know Shiny's gender. I shouldn't just randomly. They. <laughs> they order a bunch. But like, you know, their stuff is really good. It prints really well. It very rarely has issues with print fails. Um, or support issues or anything like that. It prints really well. It scales up really well. And when I say it scales up really well, I need y'all to understand that the original Knox Goblin Artificer, someone printed that at 100% scale. Like somebody sized it up to be the size of an actual goblin and printed it. And it looks fucking incredible. And I'm never going to get over the day that they were in Discord about it and were like, if I have to shave and sand any more goblin booty for the next six months, I'm going to be angry about it. So like, we're so over shaving, go shaving down goblin butt. I'm like, really? They literally were sanding a goblin's ass for like a month and a half. Because they literally, th they 3D printed it in 100% scale in resin. They do. They have a. They do have a Bowie Labyrinth inspired mini. That's with their. Um, that was part of uh, Bardic Beatdown. I'm pretty sure he's in one of those bands. Possibly not. There is Aerosmith, but it's A R R A R O O A R R O W Smith. Yeah, they've got a bunch of different, like, really, um, you know, Audacious D instead of Tenacious D. That was a thing that they did. Um, God, I'm trying to think what else. I might have thinned that down too much. This month, all of them are, um, I think this month is all level 99 bosses. So they've got like a level 99 goblin rogue. 
Sorry if you get quite a painting tiny thing. I'm so not used to painting at the scale, y'all. Feels very back to basics for me. <laughs> oh, wow, my camera is not focusing on her at all, is it? May have to move my palette. just got comfortable in the chair and then Papa starts walking downstairs and she's like, oh, nope, gotta go be under his feet. I forget which company this mini is. I just kind of randomly found her and was like, oh yeah, no, that totally fits the vibe for the character I want to play. So please to print. Thank you. the best part about having a mini painter as a partner is you could just be like hey yo guess what I need a thing sometimes yeah much it's usually like if I need a mini for D&D like this or we offered to print minis for anybody in our D&D group who wanted them and only one person took us up on it besides our kid um you know or like the thing for Thunderhead 3D prints for dice molds that's awesome may have to at you about that if you can do 3D prints for dice molds. Yeah, I was trying to actually give a bunch of mine away because um, I don't DM anymore, at least not in person. Um, I was gonna give them to a school and then something happened and the post about it got like ripped down and like they got in a bunch of trouble and I'm like, mm, okay. Ripley, oh no, it's not Ripley, okay. What is the dog into? No, it's me. You have the lab. He's literally got one of the labyrinth minis sitting well, or had it. <coughs> there you go. When I tell you, I remember. And he's even. Yeah, he's got balls to hold on to. Yeah, it's super tiny, but when I tell y'all the argument in the Discord over the size of the package on this mini was hilarious there was so much arguing over whether or not it was just right or too small or not big enough because the goblin thirst in the twin goddess discord cannot be stopped it is awful how bad it gets in there but that is your there is your david bowie labyrinth gabo i forgot all about this mini until you mentioned it and then he showed me it i'm like oh yeah i remember that conversation 
but that's what he looks like. Thanks, babe. Hey, no problem. Good luck getting that back in the bag with your tiny your hands. You think it looks tiny in my hand? You should see it in his, because his hands are like double the size of mine. That mini is like this big in the It's like, oh my. Exactly. Exactly that. Trying to lean far enough forward that I can see the mini and still keep it in frame. It's just so much smaller. All right. All right. I just really like this mini a lot. I'm excited to I, I'm excited to see what dry brushing her hair is gonna do because there's so much texture in it. Like, I don't think I'm gonna do any dry brushing like on her skin. I think that's all gonna be manually highlighting it and bringing it all up. Um, Cause I'm going for like a really warm, like golden tone for her skin. Cause she spends a lot of time outside. have enough time to finish her hair before the ad starts. My goal is to finish this mini by um, by Thursday night before I head over for D&D. Should be doable. She's not a huge mini. She's not going to have a, a really broad color palette. You know, she's got black hair. She wears a lot of browns.
obviously her bow is going to be purple, but, and, like, she's got, like, a little sash down here that's probably going to be green, but everything else is just, like, shades of brown. Which, that's a challenge in and of itself, right, is having a limited color palette. You know, trying to give anything enough variation. I'm gonna guess that was probably uh, that was probably cerulean, but I do have an ad popping, so I'm gonna take a quick break. I will brb.
I'm back. Sorry about that. I definitely was not sitting here looking at dice. <coughs> I was definitely sitting here looking at dice. I keep looking at like everything you have in your store and some of it like I kind of want to pick up a set of Joy-Con earrings for uh, for packs and for like conventions and stuff. But I really kind of want the mushroom earrings because full disclosure, I'm a witch. The little mushroom earrings are fucking adorable. I'm also looking at all of the pretty dice. Because it's all very pretty dice. Thinking about your next character being, yeah, no, that's fair. Oh, I'm sure. The tie-dye dice are very tempting just to pull the D6 out to use for Tiffany. Because both my games right now, uh, both my, my streamed games, like my work games, um, are D6 systems. But there's a lot of very, very cute things in the shop and I am giving very serious consideration to a lot of it. I gotta stop looking at dice. I gotta paint. <laughs> I gotta paint. I believe it. We got a whole horde of dice goblins in this chat. You let me know when drops are coming and I will let everybody know. other big aspect of what I do because so mini painting is my basic stream content with the occasional uh awesome well you, you ain't gonna pay me or nothing I promise just let me know when it's coming and I will be more than happy to like share around yeah I think you were definitely there Zeruin but we have like I so I'm a professional mini painter, obviously, for streaming content. I also have some lifestyle content on a YouTube channel. Um, I play games on occasion, usually on Friday, like we'll play Baldur's Gate, um, just to give me a rest from painting and not like overdo it. But like, I'm also a professional TTRPG performer. <laughs> so I'm on multiple shows. So dice is a thing, especially when I have shows that, you know, we are uh, allowed to roll physical dice. Honestly, that might have been part of the saddest part of yesterday, y'all, is we didn't realize we were going to get to where we got and we didn't realize we were really going to land ourselves in the finale because we had originally said for the finale we were going to roll physical dice because, you know, my dice, my digital dice always betray me.
what do I do when I when the digital dice betray me? Nothing. I scream that the digital dice fucking hate me. <laughs> it's my physical dice. I can launch them across the room as long as there's not a dog or a small child in the direction I'm throwing it in. Sorry if I'm out of frame, my handshakes have picked up a little bit for some reason and I'm trying to fight against them a little bit. I will win this war! I thought I picked the inside of the shirt. I looked at it and I knew I needed to paint it and then I didn't touch it. <sighs> I'm a professional painter. Oh, you were asking. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, if you only have one dice set, how do you punish your dice? That's an excellent question. Gen Con dice are part of the palette for this character, and they're still behaving really well for me. They're still being very kind. awkward, roughly panda-sized, queer as hell. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch and across multiple other platforms. Uh, I am mostly a mini painter. That is the bulk of what I do. And today we are celebrating because last night I won best composition for uh, um, Dread Nogus, which is a piece, this piece right here that I put 150 some odd hours into, 100 hours into. Yeah, there we go. Award winning now. Thank you, Negative Charisma. So this is my babies. He's just a little stompy boy. And what's great is this whole piece is magnetized. Uh, you know, and I didn't even include it in my detail shots. I literally went and painted the inside of the arm too. So I won best composition. I'm very excited about it. Um, I didn't expect to win anything. And I ended up winning one of the higher rank prizes. I'm very excited about it. Um, so, you know, it was a very nice ego boost last night, finding out that I won. Uh, so we're celebrating while also working on one other competition piece and a piece just for me. Um, before I am gearing up for the hardcore painting season for Adepticon, I am painting, uh, I am painting one thing for me and one thing for a quarterly competition that I enter. His flowers do not want to go back in the sand because they fell out. There we go. But he's just a little stompy boy trying to give you flowers. You know, if you've seen the Eddie, Edder, Eddie Izzard skit, you've heard of tea and cake or death. This is basically the same thing. Bouquet of flowers or death. Feel free to pick. But I'm real proud of it. I'm real proud of how like the hard shadows came out because I used, 
So I cheesed it a little bit and I used my down lights for my directional lighting and I just positioned it and then got in there with the paintbrush and was like, okay, there should be a line here and here. <laughs> But he's my little stompy boy and he won me a prize. He's my new friend. I love him a lot. Um, but in the meantime, we are working on Scotty the Barbarian a la Bikini Scotty. Um, I put both minis away, didn't I? Uh, I have two of them. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use for the competition, but I think it's going to end up being this one because I'm changing gears on how I'm doing her freckles a little bit. Um, but it's gonna be one of these two. We worked on the skin tones for both while I was still trying to figure out which one I wanted to paint. Um, for the uh, uh, this quarter's twin goddess thing, but right now I'm also painting this little one. This is just for me. This is gonna be my D&D &D character for my local game. So we're just getting the, the darker base tones down um, and then we'll lighten everything up as we go. And we're just kind of hanging out. We're, we're talking to folks and we've had some new folks come in um, that have never been to the stream before that are hanging out post the win last night and sharing everybody's stuff. So yeah, now I can say I am an award-winning streamer and mini painter, which is fucking wild, y'all. <laughs> it's still so wild to me. Bless you. Go back to sleep and don't lick your foot. Thank you. So yeah, I won uh, part of Dread Nagus. Now there is still the community vote, which I think I may actually have a decent shot at. I don't know when the vote is gonna go up and I don't know if they're gonna do it publicly or they're gonna do it in the Discord. Uh, both things have been tossed around. I'm not sure which yet. Um, when I know, y'all will know. So I'm excited. I think I got all of her hair now. That's the wrong brush, Panda. But Jay, what were you up to on stream today? What were you doing today? It's not listed as a wash, it's just a very thin paint, and I shook it really, really well uh, on one of my breaks, and it, it seems fine. things look like wood really well that's kind of wild because it's not a wash and it's not listed as a as a contrast paint 
or a speed paint, so I don't know, but it's laying down really nice. else talk to their minis when you have to put the brush in inappropriate places. Like it's my fucking character and I'm like sorry I gotta paint your ass real quick. night to watch the announcements for uh for the competition i was really nice to see so many faces that i knew from my community in there um i'm still kind of just floored i still know what to think <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, Thunderhead got Cypher's name right on the first try. It never happens. Every time I see Cypher pop up in a new stream, it's Cypher of the Year or Cypher of Try or... <laughs> Put her in about the galaxy and Starfield? Awesome. Not sure why the other one didn't go through, but nothing popped up in auto mod. You know, Starfield really interests me, except for the fact I know my computer would choke on it. And I don't have a, a, one of the newer Xboxes. Yeah, this paint just lays down really, really thin. So far, I'm painting this mini with all the new, um, all the new paints that you got me. That's all I'm using on this one. This is my new. Uh, D, D character. So we're getting all the base coats laid down. You know, I would really love to get my hands on some Pro Acryl. I just, it is not in the budget right now. So I'm going to start setting money aside to pick it up at the convention in, in March. Or maybe I might ask for that for Christmas. That might be my Christmas present, is to get a bunch of Pro Acryl. I have my first bottle of it coming because everybody's like, if you use white paint ever, get the Pro Acryl Bowl Titanium White. Um, and everybody was like, also buy their brushes. So with the brushes just restocking, I bought a couple and buy a bunch. I wasn't able to get the pack of them because they were sold out so quick. But I picked up a couple of brushes and the bold titanium white to give it a try. I hear the paint tastes great though. That's a joke, y'all. It's a running joke for Monument Hobbies. Nope, this is um this is all the new D and D prismatic paint. It's all Vallejo. Yeah, 
Yeah, I fully lick my brushes all the time. Usually not with paint on them, it's usually paint water, but... I just love the people, that's like, that's how everybody trolls the Monument Hobby guys, is like, what does the paint taste like? And they're just like, don't eat the paint. But yeah, getting a bunch of Pro Acryl is definitely high on the list. Uh, either at Adepticon, if they're at PAX, I might pick up some there. People speak so highly of their paint and I'd love to be able to try it. I just, it's really not in the budget. I have a bunch of paint. I bought a bunch of Cuttlefish colors this year. Um, you know. But I hear nothing but good things. <laughs> You have the entire lineup? Nice. Yeah, that's the goal is to be able to afford that. Even if I've got to build it all up a little bit at a time, it would be nice to get some of it. They actually have a new color coming out um, that I saw over that Brush for Hire. Brush for Hire? No, that might have been Cuttlefish Colors. It might have been Cuttlefish Colors that he's testing. I have a ton of army painter paints because that's where I started was one of the army painter D&D &D sets because it was really they made it so easy to get into painting with their sets um, when they still had them for D&D because now all now Vallejo and WizKids has all of that that's this lineup that I have that I'm using for this piece um, they made it really easy to get into it because it came with a paint guide and video paint guides and that actually led me to painting my first mini and it not coming out trash and it encouraged me to keep painting so I got a bunch of that lineup of paints and I've been living on those, but those are starting to very slowly run out because I use them so much. Um, and I'm starting to expand into testing other paint lines. You know, so I have, I have a bunch of Army Painter um, and I have a bunch of Turbo Dork for all of my metallic stuff because non-metallic metal is just something I cannot seem to grasp the concept of. I have tried so hard to figure out non-metallic metal and I just struggle with it. I just painted her boot the wrong color. Oh well. It's fine. I'll clean that up later. It's going to be a darker brown. Okay. I'll have to look into that one too then. But yeah, leveling up the painting is kind of just, uh, kind of just the vibe right now is I, because that's what I'm trying to do as I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to use the tools that I have as best I can because, you know, I'm not making a ton of money with Twitch right now compared to what I was making at one point. Um, you know, so it's trying to get back to a sustainable level where I can afford to buy more supplies and try out a bunch of new stuff and see what sticks. Oh, see, that doesn't bother me at all. That doesn't bother me at all. Mixing paint colors and getting just the right color is my specialty. I um, So I was a fine arts student first um, and I've taken like six color theory classes. I can color match damn near anything in under five minutes with just what I have on hand. I love mixing colors. <laughs> That's the one thing I will say I am very good at. Um, so I'm not, that's not really a huge concern. Mine is more learning techniques like 
getting glazing right and I still don't know how to airbrush and non-metallic metal scares the shit out of me because every time I've tried it, it looked like Garbo. What I really need to do, digital art, cool. Yeah, I went, um, my first round of college was, uh, what you call it, was, um, interior design. And that's back when interior design, like in 2000, when it was like, you know, all of the interior design shows were on TV and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was still physical drawings and not like, it was the first couple of years of CAD being a thing. But you had to learn how to do all the physical drawing and art and painting and all that stuff first. But so mixing colors is one of those things that it's just, I developed a knack for it really early on. Painting techniques is where I lack the most, I think. Ooh, 3D animation. My, my oldest wanted to do 3D animation and then she changed her mind. And then she wanted to do baking and then she changed her mind and then she went into chemistry and now she works with small children with special needs and disabilities. <laughs> School is wild, y'all. y'all as much as it feels like I don't I really had to come to grips with my degree right because my degree is in smut right I have a degree in creative writing in English that I got writing smut um because I that's what I was gonna do is like I was gonna write full time because it's something that I can do from home and then the pandemic hit and I became a streamer you know and people are like okay but your degree though Okay, I'm a TTRPG performer. You think I don't use my writing all the time and my storytelling skills all the time now? I'd really sit down with myself and be like, no, you're actually using your degree. <laughs> Work as an engineer or something. Yeah, see, it's, it's wild. Absolutely wild the, things, the way things work out, right? just kicked his bone under the desk he's dreaming very loudly and I'm gonna be going for a little while longer um we're gonna keep painting but at some point I am gonna have to pop off of here because I do have blue rose tonight which means that I need to take my ass upstairs and get changed um, and do my hair and my makeup and all that stuff, so I also should eat before the show. Less Rafiki fuss at me. Or worse, Lonzo fuss at me. Because Lonzo is not above getting on the phone and texting me and being like, ma'am, if you don't go eat. <laughs> I did have breakfast. I have eaten today. I'm just going to get a snack before Blue Rose so I'm not sitting there hungry. Oop. Brush! Oh my god, hi. Welcome in, raiders. Hi, hello. If you're new here, I'm Awkwardish Panda. I am very awkward. I'm roughly panda sized. I'm queer as hell. Uh, welcome to chat. Uh, I am a mini painter, just like Brush. I'm nowhere near as good as Brush, but I'm working on it. Brush, how are you doing today? 
Thank you all for the follows. Thank you for the raid. This is what we're working on today. It's my new D&D character. We're laying down base coats today. I'm painting something fun just for me because I just got done with a marathon 100 to 150 hour paint. Um, for those of you who know Thunderhead Studios and were following along with Dread Nogist, I won best composition last night for my little stompy boy. He just wants to give you some flowers. That's all. Maybe shoot you in the face. Flowers or fight, y'all pick. I'm doing pretty good. What were you working on today? I don't have links. I will say I don't have links on. Um, being a queer content creator, I have had to deal with a lot of like hate raids and stuff. So we usually don't have links on. That's probably going to be changing in the near future as I'm starting to have more people that are trustworthy that stick around in the community. Um, but if you have anything you want to share, feel free to DM it. Um... Or join the Discord, because we're going to be doing community spotlights uh, once a week, starting probably next week. I tried to set it up previously, but I was so, like, in this. Oh, you're still working on Clive? It looks so good. I was lurking watching you paint that the other day. But y'all go follow Brush. I hang out there a bunch. I've met him in person. He's a delightful human. We're talking about Adepticon lineups and what we're working on for that, but... The I just dropped his flowers in paint. I finally did it. At least it landed in a paint that matches the paint scheme. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> it's not like I can't make more. But this is my stompy boy. I love him. He won best composition and I'm very proud of myself because it's my first painting competition win. Um, but yeah, this is the type of stuff that I do. Got a little reel over here of all of my stuff. But today we're literally just working on a mini for me to take a break from competition painting for a little bit. Um, Cause I'm gonna be gearing up for Adepticon paints uh, probably in like two weeks. So, oh my God, I have done that before and cried so hard. I totally wrecked a competition piece doing that. Yes, unicorn squigs for golden demons. I'm still trying to figure out how to work that into at least one of my pieces. I haven't figured it out yet. I don't know if it's gonna be like a logo or if it's gonna be like an actual thing. Oh no, you did that with your Mechame. Oh no. I didn't realize you did that with the Mechame. I knew it broke. I didn't know it fell in paint. I would have sobbed for days. Yes, unicorn squigs. I haven't figured out how I'm doing it yet. Uh, I wanna do it, I just haven't figured it out. But I'm still kind of like working out exactly which pieces I want to do. The baller, first of all, Brush for Hire is the orchestrator of the Ballerina Space Marines, which when I tell you my then eight-year-old screamed about the entire weekend, like she loved it. You never glued it back. I wouldn't have either. I don't think I would have either. Get the pictures, have it get ruined, win the thing, and just be like, fuck it. That's totally fair. I would have, same. It would have been the same thing. I feel that in my bones. But this is my D&D character for a new game that I'm in uh, locally at my local game store. Um, we're just getting base coats late. I needed to paint something that was not competition related. Um, I do have a competition piece that I am working on. She's gonna look really blown out because she's really light colored right now. Um, it is probably gonna be this one. This is Scotty the Barbarian from uh, Twin Goddess Games in her volleyball pose. But she's got two models for this this outfit for her. It's this one. I started with this one earlier today, and then her freckles got all messed up because my brush split on me. All right, brush. Thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day. So this is my Scotty. She's for a competition that's due the end of this month, but she's not super hard to paint because she's not wearing any clothes. Um, <laughs> bikinis are pretty easy, and her hair color I have down to a formula that I have memorized, so it's super easy. Um, I've painted two other versions of her in the last uh, couple of years, uh, but I think this is gonna be the one for the competition. I'm painting her with a little bit of a sunburn because she is a ginger. Um, we're gonna get plenty of freckles all over her and then jump into painting all the rest of her. Um, freckles are probably gonna be off stream tonight, so tomorrow I can just work on the bikini and uh, her hair. 
but in the meantime, working on this one for uh, my my off stream game because I'm also a TTRPG performer. Um, but I have a game locally that's a just for fun. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, don't have to be on. Don't have to have makeup done, hair done. Like I can just show up and play. Um, and that's what this mini is. So you know, that's what we're working on today. Thank you, Cerulean. Yes, Blue Rose is tonight. Uh, it is one of the two uh, campaigns that I perform in. It is Tears of the Rose. It's over on the GR crew. We start streaming right around 8 Eastern. I actually hop off of here. So my schedule is on Monday is I hop off of here. Uh, I go eat and then I go get changed and dressed and makeup and hair for the show. Jump on the show. Then get off the uh, show at like... 9 9 30 and then eat dinner <laughs> it's like snack show dinner sleep stream tomorrow morning with more painting but i hope everybody's doing well thank you again for the raid i hope everyone is having a good monday um definitely feel free to speak up in chat hit the follow button if you are interested in hanging out I hang out over and brush a stream quite a bit. Um, it's a very fun community to just kind of hang and chill with, and a lot of ridiculousness happens. I'm usually working there in the mornings before I start streaming. I'm usually working there, working there while I'm streaming. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. I think that finally pushed us firmly over 2300, y'all. It's been bouncing around 2300 for so long. But yeah, this is just uh, our little home campaign game uh, mini. I just, I really needed to do something that wasn't commission work and wasn't Adepticon work and wasn't like a competition piece. I just wanted to paint something for me. And Scotty, even though she is a competition piece, she's kind of just for me because she's, she's, there's five different versions of that mini that exist. She's one of my favorites because she's just a really good mini and she's a lot of fun to paint. I always paint her at 75 millimeter scale. Well, that paint kind of glooped on there for as thin as it was with the last coat. That was weird. That brush butt again. But welcome in y'all. I hope everyone is having a good Monday, having a good week. So far it has fun stuff ahead for this week. I'm looking forward to the weather finally cooling off. It's supposed to be real hot here for a couple of days and then cool back off and hopefully stay cool after that. I'm so over the heat, y'all. I truly am a panda. I like it when it's cold. Because fun fact, pandas like cold, wet weather. I'm obnoxiously full of panda facts. And usually we play Stream Raiders, but I fully forgot to fire it up today. It's, like I said, it's been one of those days. I'm still kind of reeling from last night because, I, like I said, I didn't expect to win anything. And I'm super excited and I'm very proud of my win. And, you know, I'm very grateful to the judges because I got a lot of really good feedback. Um, I know what to work on going forward and what I need to push harder on to improve. So I can hit up the next one and hopefully, you know, run away with it or at least show up at Adepticon with a bunch of really cool things that people like because my golden demon goal this year is somebody loves my work enough to post it on socials that's my goal that's a win for me is somebody thinks my stuff's just really cool because <coughs> I am still very much a beginner like you know I've been painting for a while but I didn't really start taking painting seriously until after Adepticon this year Also, my mini can of Pepsis. These are my favorite little things. Because diet gives me migraines. But I need the caffeine once in a while. And that's just great. See, also hydration. 
Drink your water, y'all. All right. But yeah, we're just uh, sitting here working on our, working on Junie. So her name is Juniper, she goes by Junie. She comes from a part of our, uh, the homebrew world that we have um, for our d, d campaign where like color is really rare. You basically just get earth tones. Um, even like sunset and sunrise colors are difficult to ever see. You only see them a couple of times a year because of the direction of where the sun rises and sets. But there are like flowers don't grow there. It's just grass and dirt and rock and trees, mosses and mushrooms. Somebody with an excessively loud engine just drove fast my drove down my street. I apologize if anybody heard that like blow out the mic or anything. Like I said, it's going to be snack time and then it's going to be, uh, you know, get set up for Blue Rose, which that is its own whole setup. Like I have a box next to me that's got all my cosplay stuff in it. I have to clean all my paints off my desk so I have space for my dice tray and my notebook and all that kind of stuff. like my hands to shakes to settle down a little bit. Ooh, hang on one second. I gotta go over to the song and mark which one it is. I need, I need this song um, and a couple of ones like it for background music for, uh, what you call it, for uh, Queens of Fairlight. which is my other show. Um, that one airs on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Queen's Fairwick. Those will start airing in October. We start recording a week from today. I'm so excited, y'all. With how hard we've worked on that show to finally see Fairwick becoming a thing. in the making, give or take, but here we are. <laughs> and I have a feeling it's going to get kicked off with a very big bang. Of 
course we get a raid and then all of a sudden my nose wants to itch. Hi, Melissa, thank you. Yes, I'm milking this for exactly one day. I'm milking the award for one day. I'm letting myself have today to be like, oh, hey, I won a thing. That's really fucking cool. And then tomorrow it's gonna be, I need to get back to work because I didn't win like the biggest prize. I need to get better. I made a good stompy boy. I'm proud of my stompy boy. Oh, that's that is fair and I'm okay with it <laughs> totally fine with that I'm milking it for myself for exactly one day I'm giving myself today to celebrate it and then reminding myself that Adepticon is in 169 nice days or whatever and that I have to hunker down and get back to work because I've got stuff to paint for like big big stuff so you know I'm allowing myself to celebrate today which even that, y'all know me, that's a lot for me to even give myself the day to celebrate. Because I get those real bad brain hours of like, I don't deserve this. Cause y'all know I've been talking about that mini for like a month. I'm like, I'm putting 100, 100 to 150 hours into this mini knowing full well that I'm not gonna win anything. But then I actually won something and it's like, oh, what? Are you sure? Are y'all 100% sure on that? I mean, ask Briar. I was walking around the house last night going, is this, is this real? Did that really just happen? doing the thing we're this is a just for me paint that I'm working on this week as I'm working on this one and I'm working on Scotty if I finish Scotty in time to turn her in for the competition for twin goddess I will um next week we'll be finishing up Scotty if I don't finish her this week um and also working on Glicks to get Glicks ready to go to PAX U um and then it'll be just nothing but Adepticon starting basically the first week of October and running until I'm done painting. Or I've gotten tired of putting in pieces for it. Sorry if I get quiet, I'm 
I'm having a really bad handshake day. So I'm trying to concentrate real hard when I'm hitting some of these smaller spots. I'm trying to give her a really, really warm skin tone, so we're basing it in this really, really deep red-brown. And then I'll be working on lightening it up from there. Um, she basically has spent most of her life outdoors, so she's very tan. channel faces I've seen a lot of people around in various other people's streams so it's nice to have you know new folks coming through and hanging out with the community so I appreciate it uh, I have an ad starting in about a minute so I'm gonna take a quick break so I encourage everybody else to do the same get up stretch take care of yourselves and when we come back we'll have about a half hour or so more and then we'll find some place to raid and then I will go get ready for blue rose and be back on tomorrow but for right now I, I like I said I encourage everybody to get up stretch hydrate Get some food, take care of yourselves, and I'll see everybody back here in about three minutes. If I can find the button.
Hi Boots, thank you for the raid. You got the Pumpkin King outfit? Rad. I'm gonna show y'all something very cool real quick. Um, so found this in Thunderhead's Discord. Join Thunderhead's Discord, seriously. Um, these are caps for paint bottles. These are designed, so, uh, spe specifically these are designed for speed paints. You prime them and you coat the top in the color of the speed paint. And then you can take this and because of the shape is a stand, these dropper bottles are pretty standard across brands. You take this and you glue it down. Yeah, it was on the storm report last night for everybody who was hanging out in chat. So B, uh, it's a perfect fit. And now that I know it's a perfect fit, I'm gonna have him run me a ton of them. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna use these obviously for speed paints, um, but I'm also gonna use these for like my turbo dorks because turbo dorks, um, especially like the color shifts look different over different types of paint. So I'm probably gonna do one side white, one side black and one side and leave the middle gray. So, and then cover it in one coat or in a couple coats of each color of Turbo Dork so that I have a really good representation of what they're gonna look like on the models for like the color shifts specifically. For the metallics, I'm just gonna paint them all black and then put a couple coats on. But yeah, it's a perfect fit. I'm gonna have B run me a bunch of them. Maybe we'll do color of the day. Maybe that'll be a thing because it's gonna take some time to get, because it really is like a perfect fit. Like that's not even moving around. A little bit of glue, that's not coming off of there. Um, maybe I'll make it like a color of a day thing and every day we'll pick a color out or I'll grab a color that needs to get done. And we'll test that paint color. This is also gonna, Seeger, my dude, I love you, stop. Seeger, hey. You're gonna hurt yourself. I know your foot hurts. I don't know what's wrong. We can't figure it out. You're going to the vet tomorrow. Please stop licking your foot to death. I love you. Sorry, y'all. My dog is slopping on his foot because he's, I think he has like a cracked toenail or something that's bothering him and all he is doing is licking this foot and it's driving me up a wall. Um, but yeah, I think we're gonna do that. I think that's what the plan is gonna be is I'm gonna do like a color of the day. And every day that I'm painting, we'll have one of these out. We'll glue it down to the lid and we'll coat it. Now these are the original speed paints. Um, I would love to get a set of the new ones. We only have a few. I bought these for B for Christmas, but he hasn't been using them. So they're just in my office. He hasn't really had time to paint cause he's been super busy with work and stuff. Um, and he would just as soon have me paint stuff. Um, see her, baby, Anna. Hey, hey. Come on. Here, show your stick. It's healthier than eating your foot. So yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do is he's gonna run me off a bunch of this and prime them for me. Um, and then I like for the turbo dorks, I, I will do the black and white on either side. Um, honestly, when he's priming them, I might have him lay it on the side, spray some white, lay it on the side, spray some black and just let whatever overspray in the middle is gray and just paint it. dig it. I'm real excited about them. That's going to work out really great. But also, as I was saying, because I do like a, these bottles right here, these are my custom bottles. It's not a perfect fit, but I can still glue them down, you know, or I can look for different bottles that have different tops closer to the standard ones, but I could still glue that down right there just fine. So if I have like a custom paint mixed in one of these, like I have for, uh, oh God, where's that bust? Which we're going to, I've done a little bit of work on her, but I really need to finish this one. Like the custom paints that I mixed for the neons to tone the neon down so it'll be more of a glow effect and less of a bright, bright neon. Like those, I can put a couple drops of it in the top and know exactly what color it is. If I want, if I want like a wider piece. I really need to get back to work on her. She's looking really good though. Hey, hey. 
but yeah it's super fun it's super cool but also hi raiders sorry i'm it's a day i'm awkward as panda i'm awkward panda sized Ob the awkward is obvious as you can see panda size a little hard to see on camera but i am literally the size of a panda people in chat who have met me can tell you this uh i'm queer uh i'm a variety streamer i do mostly mini painting content but occasionally piggy games friday's baldur's gate um and i do a lot of content on youtube for fiber arts and um planning and paper craft and that kind of stuff so and i am an award-winning streamer and painter i'm milking it for today only after that it's all on y'all today i get to milk it a little bit because last night i won best composition for this little stompy friend who is one of the best minis i've ever painted and one of the favorite minis i've ever painted so much so that he has inspired a chapter of uh, Battle Sisters and a chapter of Space Marine that I am going to eventually paint. With this ocean blue, maybe I can use the unicorn squid thing for this. We'll see. And of course, if you were here a little bit earlier, luckily it doesn't look as damaged as it is. I dropped this in the paint earlier. I dropped it in paint because I turned him around. What else is new? The tear death? Uh, no. Um, so the sisters are the sisters of this shameless march because they don't do uh, walks of shame. And... Um, what the hell did I name them? I don't remember what I named the, the uh, things yet. He said it last night and I completely forgot what I named the Dawn, some Dawn Razors, I think is what it is. So basically both chapters, both the sisters and the Marines are the stay up all night party kids. They're brightly painted so they can spot each other in the dark because they fight at night and then they go to bed after dawn because they're just up all night partying and their partying is either getting flowers for people or blowing things up. That's, that's their vibe. Um, I'm excited about it. <laughs> but today we are working on a mini for my D&D uh, &D game that I have every other Thursday here in uh, at one of my local game stores. It's my just for fun game. Hey, Cece. Blowing shit up can be fun, yes. been around much this is the theme song to this the entire channel because it's literally my vibe in a single song I'm giving myself today to kind of celebrate winning and then uh, tomorrow it is back to the I gotta get better at painting. Squigs is going to be a lot of fun specifically because I have so much Turbo Dork paint. My Turbo Dork rack looks like a pile of Skittles, y'all. Except it's like every kind of Skittles that has ever come out are M&Ms. It's just so many colors. I love, I love my 
Terminator so much. Joe, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Well, that was the wrong color for the pants. That's fine. This is fine. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional painter. I want awards and shit. Mm. Totally grabbed the wrong paint to touch up that, like, pant leg. This is fine. It's just for a mini at home, right? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I have him sitting right here. I'm celebrating today and today only that I won an award for him. Because tomorrow it is all about getting back to getting to be a better painter. Because I would like to win, like, the overalls, too. So, but here he is, my little boy. I love him. I love him so much. I'm y'all, I'm so proud of this mini. My bones, especially in my hands and my back, feel all hundred plus hours that I put into this fucking thing. <laughs> what am I painting today? So I started with Scotty, but uh, her freckles didn't turn out the way I wanted, so I'm I put her aside. Um, cause I'm going to do splatter freckles and I don't want to do that while I have everything up because I want to take a sheet and throw it over my setup before I do it. So I don't end up with like paint all over my screen. Um, yes, a hundred hours and yes, ouch. A lot of it is, and it's not even necessarily competitive. I didn't expect to win anything. I went into this hoping for feedback to help me get better because I'm still relatively new in the mini painting space on Twitch and competition painting. Um, I paint really slow because I have a couple of different disabilities, like physical disabilities based on, um, one, uh, something that happened when I was in high school, um, and two, which I'm not going to talk about because it's super triggering, um, and two, I had a traumatic brain injury after a car accident, um, where I lost the use of the left side of my body and I developed severe hand tremors, um, See, there you go. A lot of people coming to, coming to the hobby later, you know, as we get older. You know, I'm 41. I I really started taking painting seriously in March of this year. Um, but I have really bad hand tremors, so I have to paint really slow. Um, so stuff takes me a really, really long time. But I'm working on speed and accuracy um, and not having to redo stuff because I screwed up. Um, so it just takes me longer to paint things. But I really want to do competition painting. And if it means that I, you know, <laughs> I don't know about pup, but you do have a few years on me and that's okay. My partner's got 10 years on me too. So, um, you know, but it's like, uh, I want to get better and I can't get better if I don't actively enter these competitions looking for feedback. And that was the whole reason of entering was I thought, there's no way I win anything unless they count me as an amateur, which I got disqualified from because they think the painting was better than amateur level, which is that in and of itself is like, whoa, <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and I thought I might get basing because I know that the base is really solid and I know the base is really solid because I spent 20 hours on it only to have a horrific chemical reaction that ruined the whole thing and I had to do it again. So... <laughs> Um, so I thought possibly basing, maybe amateur, possibly community choice if everybody turns out for me and just really likes it. Um, obviously community choice hasn't been decided yet. They haven't even put the vote out yet. Um, but I wasn't expecting to get anything better, but to get composition, like as somebody who was an art student, that was huge for me. Um, there were a lot of tears last night. I was like, I was so floored. Um... But yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of it. I feel like I did a really good job. Um, I'm gonna take the judge's critique to heart and just push harder. You ran out of time to paint your dreadnought. I, I feel that. Had we not gotten the, ex so the thing with the extension was I was on track to finish it on time, but getting the extra week meant I got to go to sleep because I was painting like 16 hours a day that last week. Um, and then they gave us the extension and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to bed for two days and not looking at this mini and then I will come back fresh and just crank it out. And that's what I did. Um, but I wasn't sleeping cause I started really late on it because, uh, my nephew was in town. Um, and I don't know how familiar folks in chat are with small children, but my nephew is four and a half. 
um, and he has all of the vigor of a four and a half year old and all of the moxie of a four and a half year old and all of the get into everythingness of a four and a half year old except he's as big as a fourth grader. He's almost as tall as my fourth grader and is 20 pounds heavier than her. So yeah. Yeah, once I took the due days off, I got it done really fast and I and I wasn't like staying up till three, four in the morning painting. I really just needed the sleep. Um, and I feel like if I would have been able to get it started on time, I would have been fine. Um, yeah, my nephew is here. So <laughs> while I was supposed to be painting this also that week, it was a hundred plus degrees in Chicago with heat indices in like the 120s um, in the greater Chicago area. So priming that bad boy became an adventure because my primer was drying before it hit the mini because it was so hot. So we had to wait to get it all the way primed and then I started late and then my nephew was here and it was just one thing after another after another after another and it was nobody's fault it's just what happened so I wasn't trying to ask for an extension but then they gave it to us and I went to sleep for two days. Yeah. So you know they were here and it was nice to see them and it was great to have them here but I couldn't really sit and paint. I was only painting at night and the painting that I was doing was like base coating the blue to make sure the blue primer and the blue mini matched and like stuff like that so I didn't get near as much done and I really didn't get started until there was only two weeks left in the competition. Um, and then we got the extension and I just went to sleep for two days and then jumped right back on it and then it got it done. So I'm really, really proud of it. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm looking forward to entering more competitions. I know that Thunderhead has said that he would like to do more competitions like this. And obviously I will jump on those um, and just get stuff printed and painted earlier. And in the meantime, I'm going to be working on stuff for Golden Demon. I'm going to be working on stuff for resin bees. In fact, I'm going to order I'm going to order two of my resin bees models today. Honestly, I might order three of them today. I might go ahead and order I might go ahead and order the trickster so I can start getting base coats laid down on the paint for that. Um, and then order my Red Riding Hood for the larger scale mini um, when the paints come back in October. That'll give me stuff to paint between now and then. Kids can absolutely. Well, I mean, painterly style is still an incredibly nice way. I'm great with feedback. I, I am. I'm one of those people that I fully understand. At this point, I'm probably done painting this for the day. So I'm gonna switch over to chatting and we're just gonna chit chat. Um, I am fully okay with feedback. I do really, really well with it when it's requested. See that, and I'm sorry, I know my camera is blurry. This camera is much better at a distance. It's got some focusing issues, but I need to get, I need to get a new camera at some point um, because my other camera does not like my lighting. Um, I'm really good with feedback, but I'm really good with feedback because of my college education. Um, my first part of college, I was in school for interior design, so there was a lot of artistic feedback. Um, and then when I finished college, I ended up graduating with a degree in creative writing and English, and literally the core of everything we did was being able to give and accept feedback graciously. Um, so I do really, really well with feedback. As a matter of fact, here, I'll turn this back around and I'll show you what I mean. Because I talked about it a little bit last night during uh, during the stream. Um, this was my entry for Mecca May. Um, I thought it was a pretty solid entry. I painted this in eight days. Um, I had a huge fuck up with the primer going on way too thick and there was nothing that I could do to fix it and this was literally the only mini in my house that qualified to enter the contest the only mini I had um this is the ta the talco bell yes I accidentally ended up painting him to look like a fucking crunch wrap wrapper um and the rust looks like hot sauce and we just kind of ran with it 
Um, this compared to that is garbage and I understand that. But I got feedback from all of the judges. I never got to hear Rhino's because I wasn't around when Rhino did his. Um, but from Walter and Thunderhead and Thunderhead was really hard on this. But he was fair about it. Um, he picked this shit apart real hard. He picked a, he picked apart the photography. He picked apart the paint job. Um, he picked apart the basing. He picked apart this mini so fucking hard. And it was deserved. Exactly. He's really harsh in a lot of ways, but he's fair about it and he doesn't deliver it like an asshole. It's a lot of, you could do better. This is where you can improve. I've seen some of your work and I know some of you can do better than this. This is what's wrong with your photography. Like literally step by step. And while it feels harsh, it's honest and it's fair. And I took everything that he said about this piece and I dumped it into this piece. Like, I'll just put them side by side. These are two separate competitions. This was May, this was August. I'm a fast learner when I get honest feedback. Here, I'm gonna put a lid on this so I don't accidentally drop this into paint because I would fucking cry forever. Um, that was a flower. I'm like, something hit the floor in the flower song. Uh, get my paint lid so I don't accidentally drop one of these minis into the paint because I will fucking cry for days. Um, there. So this mini, we'll go over like some of the feedback I got. The paint was too thick, 100%. And some of that was the fact that the primer was there. And the other was I tried to do a wash on this mini and I fucked it up really bad. And then I had to paint over it again. Yeah, exactly that, Leanne, exactly that, right? And he was right. The base looks a little empty. The green reads a little flat. Um, You know, the paint on the mini is really, really thick. The color composition is great, right? You know? The lenses came, like, if I put this up here, because my camera should focus on, the lenses came out fucking rad. Right? A lot of the little, like, the bluing around here that was, like, unintentional OSL worked out really good. DC, hello! Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, raiders. <coughs> Y'all are catching me near the end of stream, but we're doing a little conversation right now talking about uh, growth via feedback. Um, last night I won an award for best composition, um, and from what they were saying, could have been in the running for best overall piece, uh, in a painting competition for this Dreadnought. Um, and we're talking a little bit about what I do with feedback. Um, so, you know, Thunderhead was really hard on this piece. He was harder than any of the other judges were on this. Um... And with good reason, like he was really honest about like what I did. The grass red flat, the photo was blown out um, because the lighting was done wrong, um, you know, but the stripes on here were great. The color, co the color was really good. The distressing, I went a little overboard and it ended up making the, the thing look muddy, you know, um, so there was a lot of harsh critique about this piece. All right, Jay, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you again for the raid. Get good sleeps. Exactly. And there's a lot of people that also, this is the other Scott. Well, those are the two Scotties back to back. Um, so, you know, it's, 
it was harsh, but not in a mean, it wasn't mean. It wasn't meant to be mean. Um, so I do really good with feedback. I take feedback really well, 99% of the time. Usually it's delivery and it has to be asked for because this is a thing. Unsolicited advice is always criticism, always. Even if you're just trying to help, you are criticizing someone if you offer them unsolicited advice. You're welcome to ask, would you like some advice? You're welcome to say, hey, do you want a tip? The minute you tell somebody like, and I'm guilty of doing it too, like just trying to be helpful. I'm guilty of it too. Everybody is guilty of it. But you have to get in the mindset of, unless someone's asking for your opinion, careful with it. Um, you know, but it was solicited criticism. I wanted the feedback because I knew if I got the feedback, I would get better. I painted this in eight days, working about 10 to 12 hours a day with a little bit of a break at one point because I think some way about midway through the week I got real bad handshakes and I got a migraine and I needed to go to sleep for a day. Um, and I slept for like 13 hours and got up and got started again. Um, but the criticism was valid. Like I divided the piece almost in half. You know, the grass is a little one note. There's not enough scatter. If I would have pulled some of this like debris and, and dirt and stuff and pulled it back in here, it would have felt more natural. You know, it needed a little bit more for the base, for sure. The photography needed to be better. Um, you know, I needed to go way harder on the piece just in general. Like you can see in here, I took all that time to paint those stripes. And then in trying to learn how to do battle damage, I fucked it up. You know, I put a wash on it when I shouldn't have and then the paint is all super thick. So there were some really serious issues with this piece. But when I got the critiques that I got, I took all of it, wrote it down and said, okay, don't do this again, but do do this. And then here we are just a couple of months later, three weeks, a hundred plus hours of taking all of the feedback that I've gotten from prior competitions and applying it to this. See also listening to the judges when they say stuff in between, because I was, you know, I'm not one of those piece, people with competition minis where I hide what I'm painting. I put it out there publicly. I don't care if other people see it, steal an idea, whatever. You're not gonna paint like I'm gonna paint. I'm not gonna paint like you're gonna paint. So I'm really open about my competition pieces is why I paint them on stream. Like, I don't care if people see them. So I've been sharing a bunch of pictures and then Thunderhead saw the front panels of this and said something and said something about pin highlighting in a warm color. And I immediately took that and the next day is that's what I did. That's what this color is that goes all the way around the outside is it's, a, it's not actually black. It is a deep, deep red brown. But then I took that same highlight and I put it around this and I put it around a couple of tiny little pieces here and there and I put it around the legs. You know, I, I took that even little comment and immediately applied it to what I was doing because I, I am someone who thrives, my art thrives on feedback because that's how I learn. Because I have aphantasia, I can't picture stuff in my head. Everything I do, I have to learn from someone else telling me what I did right and what I did wrong when it comes to mini painting specifically and my art specifically. So, you know, I mean, I can see the massive difference. I mean, there's also to take into consideration, there is also a, I am better at painting larger scale minis because of my handshakes and my disability. Um, I am, you know, this was eight days. This was three weeks. But I took everything that he said about the base to heart where it felt very flat and one note and it didn't read very well because that green is so bright, um, you know, but it was the only, it's what I had. I used what I had to make this and I was really proud of this and I'm still really proud of this because I should not have been able to do this in eight days with the skill set that I had in May. This won something because I took all of the information that I got here and applied it here. 
And now I got information here and I will say they were very light on the amount of feedback that I got last night because they couldn't find that much wrong with it. The things that they felt wouldn't classify it as the overall winner was stuff like I didn't push the contrast hard enough. I could have kept like this dark, 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 dark blue as the darker part of the contrast. I could have gone even darker than that. I didn't push the contrast hard enough and there was stuff like this panel right here doesn't feel finished and they are absolutely right because once they pointed it out, it doesn't feel finished because you get all of these deeper reds and stuff here and in the knees and on the shoulders and on the back that did just didn't pick up here no matter how much paint I put on here I couldn't get that red to really lift and then when I did the the um, panel lining it stained a little bit of this and then I didn't go back in and push that yellow back into there um, I didn't feel it needed it but it really did so it's stuff like that so like if I were to take this to another competition I would go in and I would like fix this panel I would go in and I would darken some of these places a little bit more I would do better photography where you actually saw the whole back and not at because my photography angle for my three-quarter view back is right here if I'd have done it right there they'd have seen so much more of those deeper reds You know, um, and then Thunderhead said something at the at the very end that I almost cried a little bit because of how hard he was on this base. And he said that this almost won best basing, but the composition was so good that it like and you couldn't win both. Um, that for composition they 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 put it there as opposed to basing. Um, he hates bases that have no paint on them. He hates it. He doesn't like bases that spill over the side like this. He doesn't like bases that don't have like texture like that has been painted on. It's not his jam. He loves this. Thank you, Ariana. I appreciate it. He loved this because of, because of all of the little details because I went and I listened to this is very plain and you could have done better to, okay, well now I've got rocks that a river is running around and moss that lives on those rocks and little flowers that go with the little flowers that go in his hand. And you know, all of these little things are, you know, I, I took what he said and applied it to this and it became one of his favorite bases. That's the difference between what, maybe June, July, August, three months, three month difference between this and this. So that's how I take feedback. <laughs> Long story short, in TLDR, that's what I do with feedback. And now I have the feedback from this going into uh, going into Golden Demon and Resin Beast. And I'm going to take the feedback that I got on this, and I'm going to put it into those next competition pieces. And the goal is to consistently get better until I'm starting to win competitions. And then once I'm starting to win competitions, the goal is to be able to start teaching classes on mini painting and go from there into, you know, painting for various different companies and eventually getting to judge some of these competitions. Like that's kind of the natural progression of things. And that's the hope. And to start being able to be like, yeah, I'm a commissionable mini painter, which by the way, commissions open on October 1st. Um, but I'm only going to take one commission at a time based on my Adepticon painting schedule. So it's going to be kind of a commission wait list. What do I think about the feed feedback more contrast? Um, so yes, sometimes subtle is okay. And I was really comfortable with this and I don't know how much further I would have been comfortable pushing the contrast on this because I really wanted some of these other colors to pop. Um, thank you for the follow, I appreciate it. It's fine. You are absolutely fine. There's so many streams that I have sat in. Like I have people that I have gone back to their stream to follow them because I realized that I wasn't following them and I had been in their stream like 20 or 30 times. So I went and did it offline. <laughs> happens um I feel for this piece um I think it was fair in their specific taste I don't know that I would have pushed this mini much further 
and been and personally been comfortable with it because I really like for me I really wanted these colors to pop and this is more my taste but I also have to understand that with competition painting you are going to be judged based objectively diet objective <laughs> it's objective but it's objective diet because there's nowhere that you don't have some subjectivity of judges personal preference in the judging um and I understand that so I think that it was fair because that's his personal taste um yes yeah, somebody did somebody in chat actually brought up blackening around the missiles I might have um but I was trying to go for like and I think that's part of what didn't translate as well in some of this my goal for this piece was that this is a brand new mech. The bluing is deliberate as a style choice for the chapter colors. So my angle for them was a little different than what was su suggested. I think if it was meant to be that this was all like burnt up and blued, that it would absolutely have been wise to do that. So that's on me that it didn't translate that the bluing was a deliberate color scheme choice. Right. Right, well when he was talking about contrasts, he was specifically talking about the gradient from the blue to the, from the uh, like ocean blue to the really, really light um, green blue. Um, he specifically was talking about maybe adding some purple in the darker areas or a deeper blue to really get that bold color, you know, lighting effect. I don't think I would have loved the piece as much if I did that, but it's again, a valid critique of you could do even more depth in your colors don't hold back that's the good that's that's the way i took it as a critique was these blues and back in here could have been way darker i could have started way lighter and gone way darker um right exactly they thought it was aging which is a thing that happens barrel bluing is a thing that happens with weapons that get hot i was going for the blue is a very deliberately colored metal as part of their theme Yeah, I'm taking it I'm taking it as the contrast between light and dark could have been more. And it very much could have. Um, and I also think that they're probably right. I was real timid on how much highlighting I did here. I was very timid about it because I was worried about it being too high contrast and ruining the piece. And I think that comes through on the paint that I was being a little timid about it and Thunderhead's like no 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 no. Stop being chicken shit, just fucking paint. Stop worrying about it and just do it. Which again, we're gonna go back to, uh, where is he? Where's Buggy Boy? We're gonna grab my bug son real quick because I got the exact same critique on this piece with him. He wants me to push the contrast up in here where these pinks are even harder. He thinks that all of this, and he's absolutely right, and I intend on doing that. I hadn't quite gotten there. It's still a work in progress. But he wants to see, like, these areas up in here pushed even brighter with an even, even more severe contrast. So much as he said, go get, like, a deep blue black and outline everything down in here to make the darks even darker and the lights even lighter. Which, again, from a distance, looking at this thing is a fair critique. In person, there's a lot more contrast. In photographs, there's not. <laughs> so I'm from all over. I moved around a lot. Um, I'm currently living in the Chicago suburbs and I have been here for, fuck, how long have I been with B? What year is it? 13 years? Uh, and that's the longest I've lived in one place. Um, but I cuss like a sailor, I give no shits. My channel is not for children. Did you like to cuss there in Boston? Yeah. We have many folks from Boston in chat. But yeah, no, I cuss like a sailor. I don't care. I've had people come in here and tell me it's not ladylike. And you know what I said? Fuck you. 
I throw the word fuck around like glitter at a rave. I cuss in front of my kid. I taught my kid how to cuss when she was four years old so she won't do it for shock value at school. Because every little fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh grader cusses at school for shock value around her friends, she won't. Because she doesn't get a shock out of it at home. <laughs> no, mine was a, mine is a symptom of moving around a bunch. So I was born in the deep south. I was born in Arkansas. Um, if you get me the littlest bit drunk, I have the thickest southern accent anyone has probably ever heard. But because I've had to move around so much in my life, and especially when I moved from Kentucky to New York, people couldn't understand what I was saying. To a point that they either they understood it and they made me repeat it because they thought it was cute or they just couldn't understand me. So I had to really learn how to speak with a very clear, like non, non-regional accent. The only thing that I can't drop is I cuss like a sailor and I say y'all all the time. But this is my bug boy and it's the I got the exact same critique on this. Push the contrast between the dark and the light much harder. And he's right, especially on this piece, he's right. But I'm not there yet on this piece. I haven't gotten quite to the point that I'm doing, you know, that that level of contrast here. I haven't gotten there yet for him. Um, you know, so I think it's a valid critique. I think it was very fair. Um, I don't know that I would have been comfortable, especially in the home stretch of this particular mini, doing that. But I'm going to do it on the next one. Because, um, so for Golden Demon, I am going to paint an Adeptus Serratus, um, Rhino, but I'm going to use this color scheme and I'm going to push the contrast a little more. I'm going to go, I'm going to start darker and work my way up to the lighter blue on all of those big, flat, wide panels. And I'm just going to go for it because the worst case, the worst thing that can happen is I hate it, right? The best thing that can happen is that I win a golden demon with it, right? That's the worst case scenario is that I personally hate it. But if the quality of paint is there, I turn it in. And then the worst thing that can happen is I lose. I'm paying to go to Adepticon anyway. I ain't got to pay for the competition. I can just submit it. Somebody might think it's cool. But yeah, I don't know that I don't know that I would have been comfortable taking the risk on this piece. I think I will be more comfortable taking the risk on the next piece. <laughs> I feel that, Leanne. I don't. I probably could, but I don't. Um, photos. The only thing I use for Photoshop is I use Lightroom on my phone. Um, to auto adjust lighting for some mini shots that I don't get a really good picture with, but I have a pretty good lighting setup now, so I don't usually even need to use it anymore. Um, I probably could drop it in Photoshop and take a peek at it and see what the contrast looks like. I have, I mean, I've got the pictures on my phone. Just duplicate them and go from there. I also love that this whole thing is magnetized. It still makes me so happy that I can just switch the pieces out. Hi, pirate. Can I get a shout out for pirate, please? Right, we're talking about Stompy Boy. I won a thing. I won best composition with him. I won best composition and it was allegedly in the running for best overall. Um, and I actually kind of stand a chance at potentially walking away with a community favorite once the vote opens because chat kind of blew up when this popped up and it, I have a very large ego right now that I'm sure will get popped later. But today I'm gonna ride the high on winning a thing. Thank you. I love him. But like I was saying, we're talking, we're currently having a little discussion about feedback uh, and how I take feedback. So this obviously was my Mecca May piece, right? Not bad, not terrible. Um, I got some pretty harsh criticism on this. Um, or I shouldn't say criticism, critique. It was pretty harsh, but it was well-deserved harsh because like they knew what I did really well on this piece and they knew what I did not do well on this piece. And they, I took everything that I learned from here 
and I put it on here. That's the difference of three months with really solid critique and also giving myself enough time to actually paint the mini. And then I got really good critique on this and what what kept it from being like top notch. So I'm gonna take that and move on to the next piece because I'm gonna do a Sororitas Rhino for uh, Golden Demon in this color scheme. And I'm gonna take the advice that I got and the critique that I got on this and I'm gonna put it on that and we're gonna see how it goes. I'm ordering it Thursday night because I get a big discount at my local game store. They give us big old discounts on stuff. So I'm very proud of myself. I am I'm letting myself have the day of, holy shit, I'm an award-winning mini painter. And then tomorrow we get back to work at getting better so that I can enter stuff at Adepticon. Well, also, look, Pirate, are you proud of me? Do you see this? I'm painting a mini just for me. Not for a competition, not for chat, not for anything else. I'm literally painting a mini for me to play D&D with. Yeah, it doesn't get taught near enough. Seeger, I swear to God, my dude, I'm gonna just lop your foot off at this point. Stop. Seeger. Hey, knock it off. God, I hope the vet figures out what the hell's wrong with his toes tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I've been talking a whole bunch today. Um, but yeah, I'm painting something just for me. I'm taking this week to kind of just chill. Um, this is also the hard week. Um, because Wednesday's the big anniversary day. Um, so, uh, I'm chilling this week. Next week, we're going to work on Glicks. We're going to get Glicks ready to go to PAX. And then I'm going to dive into all of my stuff for Adepticon. I'm placing a couple of orders today to start getting, uh, resin beast stuff in. Um, I already know what I'm painting for Golden Demon, and it's all stuff that I have in the house. My goal is to not buy anything other than the Rhino, because I don't have a vehicle. Um, cause I want to enter vehicle cause it's not a super popular one. Um, I'm being exceedingly calculating in what I'm entering. Um, my goal right now is, and I'm going to go ahead and snooze my ads cause they're going to pop in a little bit, but we're going to be done before then. Um, uh, I am going to enter specifically the competitions that are going to get a lot of eyes on things like Resin Beast and Golden Demon, but I'm going to enter the categories that are less likely to be overstuffed with entries. Like Resin Beast, I went and looked. Dioramas, they have five awards. There were six entries. They had five people enter Dioramas. There's or six people who enter dioramas. There's five awards. Best gold, silver, and bronze. And everybody runs through the resin beast stuff and goes and looks at it. You know, so I'm gonna enter that's like priority one is that specific competition. Units, again, five awards. There were like nine entries. That's better than a 50% chance of winning something. And I may win nothing and just get feedback and it'll be fine. I mean, knocking shit over. It's one of those days, you know, because the goal is feedback and get people's eyes on my stuff. That's the goal overall. Um, I think my goal this year is feedback. My, my definition of a win is somebody who I do not know and have never met. Um... Yeah. Yes, and I saw that specifically with Golden Demon quite a bit. Resin Beast, it's not. Resin Beast, it is. You have to enter the individual minis. It is not. Dioramas are not allowed. Resin Beast, diorama is diorama. Unit is unit. Um, which is why I'm very much considering not doing the diorama thing or squad thing for, um, for GD. As a matter of fact, Resin Beast has a mathematical formula 
for what you're allowed to enter based on the size of the pieces. There's a maximum size and a minimum size of each piece, and they are scored one, two, or three based on the size. And you have to submit a one or two based on the size, and you have to submit between six and 12 points. So it's a minimum of three, a maximum of six. Um, and I, I've picked a set that I think that the basing is the correct size to only have to paint three of them. Um, I might buy both sets of similar minis and put in five because they're very tall, skinny minis. Um, that's gonna mean I can paint them a lot faster. Um, but I also kind of dig the style. Uh, and I think maybe we'll, maybe we'll go over that tomorrow. Maybe I'll we'll pop up a window and I'll show everybody like what I'm purchasing. Oh, I didn't know you weren't coming to Adepticon this coming year. I'm sorry. I will miss you. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, obviously I'll see you at PAX. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But yeah, I am, uh, I'm really excited about it. Oh, Pirate, you just got here. I got to show you this thing that B printed for me. They're paint caps. For stuff like speed paints. Somebody submitted these, uh, or has these in Thunderhead Studios Discord. We pulled the file last night and started, he's going to print me a bunch of them. So you basically glue this down to the cap and you prime it and you cover it in your speed paint. And you know exactly how the speed paint settles and looks on stuff. I'm going to do it with my turbo dorks too, so I can know what they look like over black, white, and gray. Your first, not sure what they, well, last year was my first and I, I didn't know what to expect. And I was a very, I was a very cautious little bean. I was very... I was very uncomfortable being around so many people I didn't know um, because I'm very new to the mini painting space as a whole. Like I've always painted minis on stream here and there, but I didn't really start taking it seriously until right around Adepticon. Um, uh, Adepticon is the end of March. And if I want to enter everything that I want to enter, I have to paint one piece a week for the next uh, however many weeks it is between now and Adepticon. Seeger, stop. You're gonna hurt yourself. I'm gonna check your foot again when we get off stream. I know, your foot doesn't feel good and you're licking it to death, so we're gonna take you to the vet and find out what's wrong, but you gotta stop. Uh, Adepticon is the last week, last full weekend in March, first or second to last full weekend in March. It's like March 20th through 24th. Dog. I have two. I have two doggos. Um, I have Seeger, who is my my baby. He's a German short hair pointer, Bernie's mountain dog mix. And then my partner has a gigantic shepherd mastiff mix, who is currently acting as our floor rug in the living room. Um. So I want to do two squads. If I do squad for, um, if I do the squad. For, then again, this is, comes to where I'm prioritizing. Here, hold on. You know what? Where's my BRB screen? I'm going to pop on my BRB screen, but y'all be able to hear me because I have the list on here. Um, <laughs> no, I have two big open dogs. So my popping up here next is going to be my Adepticon lineup with all of the stuff. I'm prioritizing what I want to do. Um, so if I start running out of time, I know where to stop. So 40k single and 40k vehicle are my two priorities for Golden Demon. Specifically because I have Gilliman coming as part of my thing. I don't have to pay for him. He's already paid for uh, I want to enter the Worthy if they have it, Brush with Death if they have it, and P3 Grandmaster if they have it. Just so I'm in a couple of different things. And then the stuff for um, resin base. But prioritizing everything, I know what I need to paint first. That's kind of the goal, is I know what I need to paint first and get really, really well done, and then go to the next piece, and then go to the next piece, and then go to the next piece. 
Um, so everything that is priority is is literally that. Everything that's marked with a red cog is priority. The rhino I'm going to order on Thursday, and I'm going. I have the paint I need for it. Um, for resin beast, the priorities are uh, not up here. Where is my resin beast slide? Okay, that's really weird. I'm going to have to like go back in and check because apparently that didn't end up on my thing. So you know, whatever. Here we are. Um, so resin beast, I think <sighs> I got to go look. Resin Beast, I am prioritizing the diorama and the unit because those are the two least entered categories. I know my camera is really fuzzy. I'm very sorry. Right. Resin Beast did the same thing. Resin Beast popped up everybody's stuff is and everything stays up on their gallery for a year with resin beast like their 2023 entries are still up this community and our obsession with asses y'all Well, thank you for being here and thank you for the follow. I hope you will be back. Um, I'm looking to see who's been on for how long, who's got low viewership. Uh, oh, Buddha just went live. I think we're going to raid Dr Drunken Buddha and go say hey. Because uh, I've never gotten to raid him. Um, more Sphinx boat. Aww. I love kitties. I love kitties, I love doggies. I have two gigantic doggies that we eat a cat. Um, but thank you again to everybody for being here today. Thank you for the raids, thank you for the follows, thank you for the hype train. Um, thanks for all the support. It really does mean, uh, you know, it, it really does mean a lot because it's really difficult. Um, you know, switching my content over to full-time painting has been a lot. Um, I've been working really hard at getting better and it feels really, really good to get a win. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Adepticon. I'm going to, like I said, this week is just kind of casual painting, chilling out. I'm painting Scotty in the hopes I finish her in time for the competition. If I don't, it's fine. Um, we're going to be gearing up for Adepticon, which is where a lot of my energy has got to go. Um, so, you know, I'm really excited about it. I'm real happy with where we're at. I feel like I got to get rid of that. Oh no, I have to delete that because we're done with Revelry. Good meeting you too. I hope you will be back and come spend some more time with us. I stream Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, though this Wednesday I may take off for personal reasons. Um, 
I am here and then I'm on tonight I'm gonna be on the GR crew for Blue Rose and then uh, Saturday night I will be on the GR crew for a one shot and then Fiends Affair starts recording next week all right let me get this raid started um buttons I can hit somewhere in all of this mess. Alright, if you are new here, my raid call is hashtag panda party with my hello emote. If you don't have my high emote, use whatever high hello or howdy emote you have. If you have Buddhas, use Buddhas. Um, I am going to be back tomorrow sometime mid-morning. I may get started a little earlier tomorrow just to hang out, just because I'm going to be painting all day anyway. Um, I'm already done with most of my video editing and stuff. The only major thing I have to do tomorrow is make sure the closed captioning is correct um, for a thing that is dropping for patrons of Fiends of Fairwick this week. So as long as that's done, I'm going to get streaming pretty early tomorrow. Um, B's going to be home, so, you know, I'll be up anyway because he gets up super early. But thank you all again for being here. I'm going to put on my ending screen and get out of here. Be nice, be kind, be your wonderful selves, and I will catch everybody back here tomorrow. Bye, y'all.